Hello folk, how you doing? Scotty. So this is the first time I've done like a sort of live feed, feed thing, so to speak. I don't even know if you can hear it as properly. Try and get this thing to go. If you can hear us, obviously comment and whatnot. Um, just to make sure and get this thing running, that way I can do live feeds. Uh, can you hear? I don't know if you can. Um, obviously I see a number of you are actually showing up. So I need to actually try and get this thing set up. I don't really see any... For some odd reason I don't see... It doesn't seem to be making any noise. Um... If you can hear me, then just let us know all that, you know? Like I say, this is just really a test thing. I'm probably not even going to save it. Um, So I'm trying to get things set up. It doesn't even have any fucking settings in this stupid thing, man. You can hear us? Good. <laughs> well, that makes something then, doesn't it? So, I recently had a comment on the other video there. Um, the most recent video, so to speak. Um, in that video, the person tried to patronise us, you know what I mean? I don't know if you watched Vicky 1999's video or something, right? Fuck knows, but just dropped there. I don't know if you watched the video, right? But basically, um, well, let's just say that she, she, or I, th I thought it was a he. I don't know. Honestly, I couldn't. I couldn't tell you, man. Um, Try to patronise me. You know what I mean? A bit scarcity and all the rest of this. Let me tell you something, folk. Right? I can be mature, right? And I've been mature numerous times in the past with these folk. I've been mature, right? It's not like I haven't been professional with folk. For the past nine years that I've, you know, debated with these people, you may as well beat your head off a brick wall. I'm no joking. You know, I don't know if you know about Caitlin Bennett, uh, who, who runs that, uh, some Liberty podcast or something like that, I, I can't even remember, Liberty Hangouts, that's what it is, right? And she goes to these universities and... Uh, <laughs> in America <laughs> and how they react is precisely what I'm up against right I mean this person this person was literally being a patronizing buffoon more or less and expecting me to take that seriously right and I thought to myself right I'm gonna do a video response but then I thought to myself should I even bother going on about, you know, in response to her? You know what I mean? I just didn't. Um, so, no, isn't he? I'm, I'm no, I'm no debating anybody yet. But right, right now, the the video, I don't know if I can actually drag it up, man. I'll show you. I'll show you right now. You see, I don't know if you'll be able to make this up. 
but right now I've got the thing up and it's I've just got Chris, I the video was made a little bit, uh, an hour long. I've got a lot of editing to do. I've been taking out a lot of video and and obviously I've got a lot of overlay stuff to do and and whatnot and that will cover the entire economic calculation problem, but not on the arguments that you've heard me say before. Um, I didn't want to go into so much detail, but I felt that we there both their arguments, right? Let me explain. Let me make it clearer to you, right? If I can just put this thing down. Right, let me explain to you. And all the, 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 don't even be clicking on. Fuck's sake, man. Right. Right, let me explain to you. When it comes down to the whole thing, right? The arguments, so to speak. I don't even know if you can... If you can hear me anyway, right? Both the videos... I was wrong for pointing out the fact that Adam Smith was the one that, based on the subjective theory of value, right? I was I was wrong for that. That was my fault, right? Uh, it's actually Ludwig von Mises, and I should have pointed that out. And I was going to do the video response to uh, Mouthy Infidel, and so he covered something on Paul Cockshot's argument, something to do with technology. Apparently, technology would save, would fix the problem. And then, of course, there was the whole thing on um, Vicky's argument. Now, Vicky covered something to do with scarcity, patronising me on scarcity, right? As if scarcity isn't, you know, something that exists. And also um, something to do with the fact that, well, you know, the people would just collectively show up and, and oh, as if by magic, they would just, uh, they would somehow just go and and uh, magically tell the central planners and the central planners will know what they're doing, right? So what I decided to do was I decided to do a video on the economic calculation problem, but covering what I left, what, what I basically left out from the previous videos. So, I've already covered profits and losses, so I didn't bother going into that. And I covered on the variety of options, but the, but the information that I left it was more or less down to the, the whole thing. Well, the information that I left it was more or less on, you know, consumer behavioural patterns and everything. All the stuff to do with, you know, how people react within groups, you know, conflicts of interest and everything, and explaining why basically the technological uh, argument cannot fix the economic calculation problem. So I went into depth on that, and that's the video that I'm currently working on. And now, now that video responds to both Mouthy Infidel and responds to. Um, Vicky, nineteen ninety nine. Now, I got a comment there on my recent video, and the recent video was, you know, okay. I I, I didn't respond in, uh, you know, a, a formal manner, shall I say? Right, I wasn't exactly formal about it. But what do you expect, right? For the past nine years, I've put up with a lot of patronising behaviour. Now, I've tried to be reasonable with a number of these people, right? My video, I explained why socialists don't understand economics, and that was the one that she was apparently responding to, right? But the way that she came back, her response was... Very, very patronising, right? And I thought to myself, well, what ma what makes these people think that I'm going to respond to them in such a nice manner? Um, and that was kind of why I reacted the way that I did. 
And then the person patronises me over the fact that I touch upon definitions. I'm not saying that everything comes down to definitions. No, everything comes down to definitions. That's not that's no the case. It's not just a case of just pointing out definitions of socialism. And I, I've never claimed that. You know, I've pointed out examples after examples showing the flaws of socialism theoretically, etc., etc. So I don't know where the person comes back with you in terms of that information. It just it doesn't make sense at all. But I just thought I would cover that anyway. Um, and I wanted to just basically test this thing out, uh, you know, just to make sure this whole thing's working, so to speak. But, um, you know, most of the time, and this is just my, my experience, right? I try to be reasonable and I try to, you know, put across my information. In most cases, I will. I'll put across my information in, in you know, ways that that's sensible, right? That's, at least I try. Um, so it's just that one particular video that something today with me crossing my eyes and basically showing an unprofessional behaviour or something pish like this and, and then trying to call me an idiot. It is, I just deleted the comment, of course, because of the fact that, you know, it was just a waste of time. It was a waste of time me even trying to explain myself in that. Um, you know, for, for the past nine, ten years that I've tried to argue with these people, tried to debate with these people, it's like you can, you may as well take your head and smack it off that brick wall. I've I've tried being nice to them. I honestly have. I've tried being nice to them. I've tried that strategy. I've gone down that road. I've tried that road. You go down that road and, and all you get back in return is basically them abusing you and calling you stupid. That's what they do. They, they just go, oh, you, you're stupid. And they laugh at you and they patronise you. Right? And that's what you're trying to debate. Now, I, I can understand that, I, you know, the video wasn't exactly professional. I'm no, I'm no claiming it ever was. And I'm no saying that I'm wholly innocent. <laughs> that isn't any case. I'm no saying I'm innocent. Right? I'm no... I'm not claiming that, right? I'm no innocent. I'm no perfect. I'm no fucking Mr. I'm no Mr. Wonderful. Like some people try to pretend that they are. Mind you, you've got a lot of narcissists out there who like to think they are something. Um, but I'm no perfect. I'm a human being. I've got faults about me. I'm no perfect. I'm no Mr. Wonderful. I've got flaws about me and that's it. You know, some people like me and some people don't. <laughs> Who the fuck cares, man? So I don't, don't ever pretend to be anything special. But, um... So, when I put out videos, I try my best, right? But sometimes I can lose the plot, and I admit that. I fucking admit that. Sometimes I do. Right? So, and and it's, it's just part and parcel. Right, it's just it's just me, right? I, I I lose the plot with some people, and I can't help that. Hello, Frederick. How you doing, pal? So uh, you know, uh, how do you approach things strategically? Well, this is part of the reason why. You know. I find live feed debates very difficult with these people, right? Now, the, I've got to admit, right, and I, I will say this, I will say this, right, that young boy, what's his name, Mouthy Infidel, or whatever his real name is, that young boy's a reasonable-minded young boy, right? He's no, he, he doesn't cut, well, in, in most cases, he doesn't come across like, like others that I've came across, right? You will remember... The Finnish Bolshevik. You'll remember debates and the videos are probably not even there anymore. What's his name? The Mao's Rebel News. 
Jason in Unaru or whatever, right? You remember debates that I've had with him, and it's it's nigh impossible to try and debate these sort of people because it, it's it, it really comes down to the fact that you you try to be nice to them, you tell them facts, and all you get back is them talking to you like as if you're an idiot, and you. you, you <laughs> Sometimes you, fit, you you sit there and think to yourself, why should I even take that? <laughs> why should I even accept that? I wouldn't accept that off anybody. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's difficult. It's it's difficult from my perspective to try and you know debate in that and and, and how I respond to folk. Well, that is good to see, mate. I'm glad to see that and. Uh, Obviously, especially this whole lockdown thing. That's actually something I've covered just a tiny wee bit in this new recent video that I'm I'm currently working on. I scripted it out because I don't normally do that. Mace, see, most my videos are not even scripted, right? It's just a case that I just speak from my mind and that's it, and I just take it and, and fling it up uh, after editing it. But with this video, I properly scripted it out went through all the information because I wanted to cover what I wanted and and I've, I've, I've basically put in a lot of stuff. I mean, what I've covered in the video, right, briefly, is in relation to day with scarcity, relative scarcity and everything on the economic calculation problem. Not today with profits and losses. I mean, that's covered, right? I don't need to go down that road. Um, and then I covered on in relation to groups and how they basically um, are faced with constant conflict of interest, as well as the fact that, you know, they've not got all this information in their head and why technology cannot read your mind, right? It's just so much that goes into all that sort of information and, and of course, uh, um, that pretty much takes both Mouthy Infidel's argument and Vicky's argument and, and covers that... Uh, all, all in basically one. Um, so I, I just I, th I thought it would be best to to actually cover both because both of them were touching on the economic calculation problem. And it, you know I don't I don't know how many times I've came across the arguments. Hello, Crod. How are you doing, mate? Um. So I, you know, it's just uh, this is like I say, this is the first time I've set something up for this whole webcam thing. I was trying to get it working on my Brave web browser, but it was just blocking it and it wasn't working. So I then resorted to Firefox. So I'm, I'm using Firefox at the moment. Uh, I, I'm, I'm good, mate. I am, I'm good. Um, it's just been a bit shit with this being stuck in and I could be gone out and then Yeah, that's the thing, man. Because when I was locked in, you pro you might not have seen the video. Um, I was basically stuck because I get banned off Facebook, by the way. Right? Well, for 30 days, that is. The usual. Fucking banned me for 30 days on the 12th of March or something. Right? And what, what, did, what did they ban me for? It was like something ridiculous. Right? The usual pish. They, they, they banned me for fuck knows, right? Um, pff, ridiculous. So I decided, since it was long planned and it was just something I wanted to basically get done, um, and I don't know, maybe, maybe I can find some way to do an economics video in relation to day with my photography, you know what I mean? Because I, you know, I, I wanted something for my portfolio, so... That's why I got my, my photo book made up from Sal Digital. Um, Sal Digital, so I basically got my photo book made up and everything. Um, unbelievable, the professionalism of this, the quality of this box and everything. And, you know, um, that was the, the whole book, everything I, I designed myself. You know what I mean? Everything I designed myself. So basically... Uh, the cover, yeah, I photographed that when I was in Verona. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, uh, there's, I'll just quickly give you a wee swatch here, if that's the word you want. <laughs> right, so, but I, that's what I was doing throughout my, my thing, me. Um, you can see I used glossy. Don't know if you can see it there. Um, there's just there's a lot of photographs I had taken, um, and I made it as a documentary style. So, obviously, I've got some of it as a review on my channel, my photography vlogging channel. That is, um. Again, all these photographs I had photographed, you're not going to see it the same on webcam. Um, but of course, it's got to say, still digital software is just unbelievable, man. You know what I mean? It's superb and the quality of the. I've got to say, in terms of the print and everything, because I was actually speaking about that the other day. So that's what I decided today on, you know, the whole thing. I, I designed everything. Saw my own photographs and that, so it's part of my portfolio. That was one of the photographs I'd taken. It's basically the the Ponte Pietra Bridge in Verona. That's an that's actually a Roman bridge. Um, the original. Obviously, some of it was destroyed. Uh, the United States had bombed it or something like that during the Second World War, unfortunately. Um, but. You know that that's just a sad time period. It was it was it was the World War, and obviously it saved so many people's lives. Hitler was a I don't, I don't even need to tell you he was a an evil an evil man, so to speak. Um, but I am I'm I'm, pl I'm pleased with how the the book turned out. You you don't see it the same on on this thing. Um, nah. Obviously, did a, I went over and I spent so much time into all the sort of text and all that because you have to go over on the, the text and and see that's this is obviously my career, you know what I mean? Um, basically in relation. So obviously, I'll be looking to do pet photography. That's something. Uh. So I, I mean, there's just there's obviously so much that I could go through in that. Um, so you kind of get the the, the point. Yeah, I think what where's that one? It's there's there's one of my favourite photographs that I've taken, the one here. Um, caught that. And that was just obviously from Malchesney Castle at Lake Garda. But yeah, that's. Uh, that's more or less the photo book. It covers basically Bologna, Verona, eh, where else? Bologna, Verona, Venice, Lake Garda, and several other places, so to speak. I really should get something set up like a wee thing me and 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 photograph. Because I was using obviously things that I had photographed part of the book and, and adding all that stuff in, so that all that was time consuming and whatnot. Um, but I, that's just part and parcel of the whole thing. But I did cover the whole thing on the well. I basically a wee bit about the the coronavirus, um, because obviously at the end of the day, you know. When it comes to the economic calculation problem and you're trying to plan when there's events and there's hundreds of events, you're not just talking about a, an event for a, a country, you've got fucking events that sur far surpass that, people's birthday parties and all the rest of that. You, you, you add up all of that across an entire nation. It's impossible for socialism to deal with that. Um, so that's something I, I obviously covered. But... You know, a lot of you folk will, will will not have seen, you know, a lot of that stuff. I mean, that is my photography. Because when I went, obviously, uh, in Verona, um, I decided to take that opportunity. 
to properly get photographs for my portfolio. Because when I did photography at college and I basically, yeah, I basically did a documentary project and it, most of the photographs that I used wasn't even mine. Well, it was, it was my photographs, but some of them were, even, a lot of them weren't even taken by me. You know, I mean, I just used it because it told the story, but I wasn't happy with it. So there was photographs I did take and added, didn't you, to implement, but it wasn't good enough. So I just decided I'm going to properly make a documentary photography book that's personal to myself and something that obviously I can show to clients that shows my work and, and, and that's that part and parcel of the whole thing. So yes, um, at the end of the day, um, I've I've been uh, there's uh, it's going to take me hours to do that thing, because they see these type of videos right the the type of videos that I'm doing the new, that will take a lot of work because of the fact that I didn't record video of myself speaking, so it's just audio that I recorded because I scripted and I recorded the the entire audio. And it, 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 it was about 2 hours and 47 minutes or something like that, so I ended up shorting it right down, because there's obviously bits that I repeated and, and made mistakes, so I took all of that out, managed to get it done to about 1 hour and 1 minute. But there's obviously something in there that I, th I, I think, right, I'll probably try and take out during my editing, so I'm, I'm you know, it's just one of these things. But the, the longest part is going to be getting all the videos off of YouTube that I want and then using those videos to overlay that in this video basically is going to cover the economic calculation problem extensively. Like I said, it doesn't necessarily need to go into the whole thing in, in profits and losses, but I've basically made it in dummies language so that you know, anybody can understand why the technological argument is not going to solve the problem. You can't, you, you can't solve the economic calculation problem regardless of what technology you've got. It would, it would not matter how intelligent artificial intelligence is. And it's not, it's not going to matter. It's, uh, it doesn't solve the issue. Um, and I don't know how many times I come across the argument, and it just, it just so happens to be that the primary reason socialism doesn't work basically is to do with the knowledge problem and the economic calculation problem. And when I, I looked over in Mouthy Infidel's video, he did also touch upon something, and I left it out, but it was on the whole thing on Venezuela and, and uh, Chile. And I thought to myself, right, I'll leave that out for a separate a separate video or something like that because from his claims he's trying to say that the United States had long intervened into the likes of Chile and that uh, the cause of Venezuela's problems is something to do with the United States and Saudi Arabia uh, ramping up production of oil therefore apparently this is what led to such a massive problem in Venezuela so what what I covered in this economic calculation problem video, the one I made it in the new, is that there's profits and that's not no 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 there's what do you call it? There's price ceilings and price floors, and that's something that I'm probably going to go more extensively into, and 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 cover you know proper examples, right? Because that's. That that is actually one of the things that that correlates to the argument, but in, in other words, they they don't understand the reason why socialism caused all these problems. So that's that's something that they want to cover separately. And I thought it was too much for one video. Uh, as you said, don't forget the corruption that existed in those planned economies. Oh, you're exactly right. I mean, see if you look at it right. See, honest, honest to God, uh, Richard, I mean, um, when when you end up with these big 
authoritarian governments. It's only natural it's going to happen. One example of that was actually Venezuela. And that was the day with the... What do you call them? Is it the PDA, PDVSA or something you call them? PDVSA? I can't even remember. It's something to do with the groceries. And because of state... Because of corruption, in other words... And that obviously, that's the blaming government's interven intervention. But because of the corruption... They were just taking 75,000 tons of food and just dumping it. <laughs> so, no, no bloody well surprised that they were resorting to using, um, what do you call it, yogurt for the sake of an, uh, an alternative to milk. And I, either, I mean, these wee examples can, can be used for the, you know, economic calculation problem and, and all the rest of it. Um, so it is, it's going to take me a, a good bit just to edit through because I've got to add in all the videos because what I try to do is I add in bits of video that correlate and relate to what I'm basically speaking of um, if, if I was Superman I would go and record all of it myself <laughs> but I'm not driving yet I was, I was actually restricted because of the fact that well my theory test was meant to be in the 6th of April, right? So I was supposed to be doing my theory test. Uh, but unfortunate as it is to say, the coronavirus knocked me for six and I never got to do it. The government came back and says that, well, you, your your theory test has been suspended and you'll have to wait till a later date. And it's like, oh, that's fucking shit. <laughs> that was crap. Uh, as you said... Uh, opinionating Scotsman, he said that the EU did a similar thing, if I remember rightly. You might actually be right. You know, see, see one of the things that's been so wrong with the 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 European Union is the protectionist tariffs and how they've been harming Africa. You know that the, the you know, it's just as if Africa is not already in a bad enough state as it is. It's and and you know yourself, it's free trade that's going to solve their problem. And yeah, I know they they have all the the leaders in Africa, and their problem is they don't have that economic freedom. They don't they don't have the the, the same property rights and all the rest of it, and that's a problem in and of itself. But it doesn't help when you've got the likes of uh, the EU imposing protectionist tariffs and all that, and that was actually one of the main reasons why we needed to get out of it. Never mind the immigration crisis, I mean I, obviously, see if you've got things like, and I, you know yourself, I don't support the NHS, but when, see when you've got things like a welfare state you've got an income tax, you've got social security, you've got <laughs> you name it, right? No country can possibly sustain that um, it's just, it, it, it isn't possible um, and I, I was having a debate uh, the other day and I, ca I actually came across my first Georgist you call them a Georgist <laughs> I had to do my research on that <laughs> I've never heard of them in my life um, a Georgist who, who supports Georgism and I was reading um Murray N. Rothbard's, you know, argument on that. And he basically says they support this single land tax of about 100%. 100% land tax. You may as well just call yourself a slave, <laughs> right? 100% land tax and it will fund absolutely everything. And, and, and basically what Murray N. Rothbard says, he's, he's basically saying that it's it's essentially just nationalisation. It's it's just another way of saying I'm not a socialist, but I support socialism. <laughs> Honestly, God. So yes, that was the case. Um, I actually thought about it. Maybe I should actually do a video on that. You know, I don't see why not. When I do have more um, knowledge on the subject and I, I read more into Georgism, then maybe I will do 
a video on Georgism because I've never done it before and I've never came across it before. So I'll put this down here, don't I? So I will get around to doing something on that and I've I've got a number of ideas and I've obviously had a number of your requests and what I really should do is I've got a, a note that thing on the iMac, it's like the wee notepad thing. I'll I'll probably sit down and I'll list down the videos that obviously requested because you can obviously tick off what you've done and stuff like that. So I will take a note a number of the videos. So see if you've got any video requests or that, then honest honestly, you know, I I will try and, you know, do it. Um let's see what else. As you said, uh, I remember the Soviet Union was rationing food in the late 80s. Uh, aye, aye. And it's so, honest to God, mate. Um, I'm no kidding. I mean, I, I'd be, I, I'm on actually, is it chapter 8? I don't think, no, wait, it's, I, I think it is. I think it's chapter 8 I'm on now. Um, let me see. Just to double check, man. Um, come on. Go to. Yeah. So, basically, I have been reading, obviously, Kristen Nemitz. I can't even, sorry, I, I can't even pronounce his name right. I, I keep saying that, right? Nemitz. He's got one of these funny names. It's uh, it's probably Niemi Yetz or something like that. <laughs> God knows. Right. His book basically that right you can see somewhat partially text <laughs> right socialism the failed idea that never dies uh and i'll quickly go to the the section where's the where's the menu where's the contents so basically, the, the the things that I've read, um, I've read all these chapters, especially in North Korea. I thought I thought that one was in in another chapter seven. I also covered briefly on Albania. I didn't know anything about that one. The Khmer Rouge was actually quite interesting. Now. Basically, the the basis because right now I'm 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 on East Germany, right? The one today with that, but basically, the basis of this book, it covers a lot of interesting um, quotes by socialists, but the theme of the book is that through each of these regimes, they go through this sort of phase. And it's this phase where they go through this period of the honeymoon, right? Where it's like, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a democratic paradise and it's, it's so wonderful. And, and some of these people, right, they would go to the likes of the Soviet Union. They would go to the likes of North Korea, right? And the quotes that you read from these socialists honestly paints these labour camps as if they were paradises, right? One woman uh, spoke of North Korean labour camps, right? And and she paints it by saying that it's got no walls and that the people just go there just to think about the wrong that they have done and uh, and it's it's something... Of, of a wonderful little happy place that uh, that that the rest of the world can can learn from, yeah, that explains the very reason why people were risking their life to escape the regime. <laughs> I should find I should find that documentary. I should do a video on that and put a documentary of the <laughs> the North Korean people trying to escape that regime. <laughs> <laughs> and and some of the quotes are, with, <laughs> are within that. Uh, it's marvellous. So, um, as you said, please do a video on Georgism. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. Um, 
because I, I think that that would be actually quite interesting because you know I, I don't think I've covered anything on the 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 issue to do with land. Now, obviously, you know I'm a big supporter of the private ownership of land, but his claims, interestingly, was to do with the fact that apparently there's these speculators that they... Is it hogging the land or something? I, cause I, again, I've not read too much into it. I don't, I, I don't specifically know because I don't have the knowledge. You know, I'm not scared to say whether I've got knowledge on something or not. If I don't have the knowledge on something, I don't really speak about it. It's, that's just how it is. Um, but of course, it's one of these things that apparently there's these speculators. And how Murray N. Rothbard, you know, explains things, um, he says something about time preference that, of course, the Georgist doesn't take into account. He, the, the, the Georgist does not take into account that um, landowners don't just leech. They don't just get. They they actually save, they invest, and it was through that saving and investing that enabled countries like the United States and Great Britain to become as rich as we are today. To, to, to basically, you know move from the period of where we were like 200, 300 odd years ago to where we are today, so that's something that the George just doesn't cover. So I thought, you know, that would be quite an interesting thing to touch upon. Because let's face it, the guy was arguing for a heavy land tax. (laughs) He wasn't calling himself a socialist. So that's why I kind of thought to myself, yeah, it's basically, um, it's basically supporting socialism without calling yourself a socialist. And apparently, someone was calling themselves a libertarian Georgist. <laughs> I don't know how someone gets around to to that. <laughs> it's just quite laughable. Um, as you say, what do you think about? Ludism? I, again, I, I can't. I can't tell you anything about that. I'm gonna have to do research on that specifically. Um, as you said, uh, Frederick. Also, you should upload this live stream when you're done. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, I'm. I'm not entirely first. Um, I did a lot of live feeds on Facebook. <laughs> But let's just say, <laughs> within the space of about a day, a day, right? I posted a video. <laughs> it was one video, like a live feed or something, up in Facebook. And the next day, I get um uh, some some sort of thing saying that I cannot post live feeds or advertise on Facebook for the next 60 days. Two months? Two months? For what? For for apparently a comment that I made in May 2019. <laughs> May, May 2019. <laughs> like, over a fucking year ago. <laughs> Honest to God, folk. Facebook is just... Facebook honestly has become something of an utter disgrace. I am actually... Um, just to just to um, inform you, I am on Minds. And I don't know... That's an interesting subject that I should do. Alternative social media. My videos on here, on YouTube, get automatically posted directly to BitChute. So I do also have a BitChute account that obviously people can follow. And and my videos auto- automatically get updated there. Um, but I don't know if there's any platforms that I may not know about, that I might not be aware of, that is growing. The problem that we've got 
there's a somewhat oligopoly over social media currently with Facebook, Twitter, obviously Instagram is related with Facebook and of course YouTube and, you know, Google owns it, right? So there, there is somewhat of a monopoly. You call it an, an oligopoly. Um, partially. Uh, and the, the issue that we have is the very fact that when people break away from these sites, they're going to a variety of different options. They're not going to the one place. And because there's just so many of them now, it's kind of like you kind of think to yourself, well, what is really going to compete with these other, you know, conglomerates? What's going to compete with them? And that's, that's something that I do find quite interesting. As you, as you quoted saying, Richard, um, here's a video on the East German economy. It's on YouTube. That was the GDR, a history of the other Germany, three of seven. Ah, so there's actually various parts of that. I'll definitely watch that. Um, something to do with the, the plan to the economic collapse. Yeah. Now, there's a lassie on my Facebook and obviously she came, she, she came from the left wing but has been learning so much and she's been, you know, she's been open-minded and asking questions and I've been trying to get her to understand that corporatism's not capitalism and, and she's she's really starting to learn and stuff like that, which is nice to see. And I, I like to see people like that who are open-minded and, and willing to question things and, 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 and whatever. And um, she, uh, mentioned something it was in relation to do with the forced vaccinations. Cause obviously I'm against that. And the whole thing with Bill Gates, that he, he can take his forced vaccinations and he can stick it right up, but the sun doesn't shine. Um, but, she mentioned something obviously about people changing. Are we always going to be stuck in this mess? Are the globalists always going to hold us because most of society just don't get it? Well, sadly, I don't, I don't know about that. History is a very complicated thing and you always see rebellions. One thing for sure, the globalists are not going to achieve what they want. You know, history speaks for itself on that. There's always going to be riots. Just look at, for example, uh, President Macron. Is it, is it President? I don't fuck knows. But Macron, um, at the end of the day, tried to raise the tax rates. You saw all the riots and, and the violence that broke out there is just horrible to see some people losing their eye. Yeah, horrible to see um, but that's that's actually an interesting picture. It's a perspective of what happens when you're fighting against socialism, basically. But um, it, yeah, there there is there's a, a lot that I wish to cover on those type of things. As you say, you, sh you should look up this book, "The Rise and Fall of the Soviet Economy" by Philip Manson. It's really in depth. Thank you for that. Yeah, I will definitely check that out. And I've obviously, you know, I love, I love. That's that's actually the reason why. Well, it's actually part of my birthday. I lost my old Kindle, unfortunately. Um, gutted about that, but that's the 2019 version. Can't complain. But I love my Kindle, and the fact that it's just so compact. I can just take it take with me wherever I go and obviously even when I go to things like the gym and stuff like that um, but and, and, and the fact that I can hold all these books all into one you know, one wee device and it, it the battery life lasts for so long man um, that's actually something I could add in in my argument on the economic calculation problem with regards to technology it's just incredible 
Um, some people prefer reading the books, don't get me wrong. I've got a number of uh, books there and stuff like that, and I do stomp, some, sometimes actually prefer. But I just I like the fact that I've got all that, and I'll probably look up um, to, to get that book there uh, on this, because that would be an interesting read. Because um, I, I, I know... I know the brief history. You know, I, I understand the brief history of the Soviet Union and it's and why the economic failures, because that's what I kind of look for. What I look for is examples of, you know, historical context in relation to the economics. That's what I look for. So that's why Tom DeLorenzo's book how Capitalism Saved America was, you know, a fantastic book. And, you know, it's a, an unbelievable book um, that really covers a lot in relation to do with the American history, especially on the highways, the roads and stuff like that. And it, it, it gets you to understand, obviously, so much that it fault with regards to other arguments. But, yeah, it's, it's something that I, I, I absolutely love is... is these type of books, but since that's obviously in relation to the fall of the Soviet Union, yeah, it would be a really interesting read. Um, what example? Yeah, definitely, definitely. See if it's got a lot of those sort of examples. You know, I, I would love it. Um, so that's definitely something I'll, I'll look in, into. Uh, I'll definitely take note of that. As you said, it's by Philip Manson. I've never. Can't say I've heard of him. Um, one, I was actually, and I didn't add it in. I was going to add it in. You know, what's his name? Peter Hitchens. You know Peter Hitchens? Well, Christopher Hitchens' brother. Um, he recently said that he lived in the Soviet Union. Well, I kind of already knew that because in the politically incorrect guide to socialism, uh, there's a quote by Peter Hitchens and it's quite a telling quote about denying that they were socialists and denying that the... If I can remember right, who they were part of was something to do with the the Bolsheviks. Was it? Yeah, there's covering up things with a web of excuses and stuff like that. There's quite a, a number of really interesting quotes, but so far of the book, um, Christian Yemyet's book has been absolutely fantastic. They covered just so much. It's it's really interesting, and I have actually whether to leave it in or not. I have actually put in some quotes um, in relation of what Beatrice and this is Sydney, Beatrice and Sydney Webb, and Beatrice. I think it, I think it was Sydney Webb who came out and said something about the democracy in the Soviet Union. It's it's remarkable that the. It's like these people live inside their own fantasy world, inside their own head that's just away in a world that's just non-existent, that just... <laughs> it's like they've literally, you know, created their own history inside their head. <laughs> um, and that's that's the, the message that you get from uh, that book. Uh, and I thought... Because he covers on... The Khmer Rouge, if I've pronounced that right, with Paul Pot, and he touches upon what is that? What's his name? Noam Chomsky. Like I, I knew that anyway, but Noam Chomsky coming out with all the you know the usual nonsense about oh it just uh, it's all it's all the fault of state capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't take him seriously. Um, Philip Hansen. Yeah, I'll definitely check that. 
because that, that's what I, you know, in my spare time, because that's why I've not been posting up as frequently, because I, at the same time, I do have a lot of courses on um, Udemy. So on Udemy, I had been doing courses, you know, beginner to advanced, although I kind of already know all that stuff on Photoshop. But of course, uh, the advanced Photoshop, just to pick up anything that I may not know, went through all of that. And and all of that, you know, takes up so much time. It's like that course alone was about 15 hours or something. Um, and I do it obviously to brush up my skills, to improve my skills, um, especially for editing. And I've got a few courses there as well on color um, editing. So what one of the one of the courses I've got on Udemy at the moment, not just on After Effects, but there's one uh, on Adobe Premiere. Now that's the software that I use. But what this guy covers on that entire course is just the colour. You know, colour editing to do with the video. So I think that would be good. Because I would like to be able to, you know, improve my skills on that front. And plus the fact that doing the same thing in Photoshop. So it's, a, it's basically what you call colour grading and, and, and stuff like that. So, you know, that's just all stuff that I had do, been doing on the side. And plus the fact, obviously, reading the stuff, so it take up my time. And I do apologise, you know, about six months ago when I was posting videos frequently, you know, what happened was that the the channel got to about 5,000 views, right? Now, for some odd reason, there's something suspicious going on. Well, it just all of a sudden came to a halt, despite how much, you know, work I was putting in. And, if, and, and and nothing was improving. It was, it was like, in, in fact, it actually at one point went from 5,000 views and it started going down and I was thinking to myself, but I just posted up new videos. I'm thinking, there was the, the, they're at it. You know, that's how I felt. Because if you're, if the incentive is you're, you're trying to, you know, push the channel so that it can drive more views to get more information out there. But I don't know. So far, however, it has rapidly increased. Just as I started back, it was at 2,300 because I was inactive there, as you know. But it's went up to about 4,400. Um, I don't I don't have a clue if that's got anything at all to do with the fact that the, the coronavirus. What do I know? Um... But I'm hoping that I can really put out as much as I can. And I kind of got to the stage that, you know, these videos, some of the videos take so much hours of work just to put in. So I thought to myself, you know, why spend so much hard work transcribing the entire video? Because that's something that I was doing. And if you don't know what the transcribing is, it's basically going into the actual video and typing out word for word every single word that you say in the video. Now, some sometimes that can take like over an hour just to do. And I was doing that with all my videos. And it, beca it, it, it it's draining. It's, it, it's draining because to record the video and then doing editing, some videos would take more than five to about ten hours. And you're thinking to yourself, like, fuck. fuck. It's just, it, it, it really is soul destroying. So that's why I kind of lost incentive because you, you can see it yourself. They're, 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 I don't know whether it's just me I think Prager University saw it themselves and, they, and there was even that video, you might know, you might remember a video called National Socialismus. 
you will remember that video probably. National Socialism. Um, let me show you something. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've got that picture on my hard drive. I do. I'm 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 actually positive I do. So I'm I'm going to, I'm going to just quickly drag it up the now right, and I'll just quickly show you. <laughs> Facebook actually banned the video, right? They banned it across all countries. And I'm thinking to myself, what the hell was wrong with the video? What, what, what was wrong with it? What, what exactly was wrong with the video? And it had about 16,000 or something, and more than 18,000 or something video views or something on it, right? I'm thinking to myself, why was the video banned across all countries? Well, <laughs> well wait and you'll see, <laughs> right? Because when I drag up, obviously, the screenshot, you will see. And I'm pretty... Uh, ah, there it is. <laughs> Magical. Yeah, here it is. Here's the, here's the picture, right? I'll show you. And you'll get to see it for yourself. I don't know if you can read this, right? I'll try my best. <laughs> YouTube basically go on to say, as you may know, our community guidelines describe which content we allow, what we don't allow on YouTube. Your video, National Socialism, is National Socialism, Undeniable Truth, Facts About Natu National Germany, oh sorry, Facts About Germany, it just says, was flagged to us for review. Upon review, we determined that it violates our guidelines and we've removed it from YouTube. <laughs> Unbelievable. <And laughs> right, you get the point. You, you understand the point, right? You know and I know why that video was removed. A donkey could tell you why that video was removed. That video was removed because it spoke the truth. That video was removed because it showed the glaringly obvious fact that Nazism is the same, more or less, as communism, right? It doesn't matter about all the theoretical nonsense. All that's, all that's irrelevant. The, the irrelevance of one being internationalist and the other being nationalist or the irrelevance of, you know, all the theoretical nonsense, right? The bottom line is, they found it offensive, so they removed my video. <laughs> and, and, and you think to yourself, well, what if some of my other videos take off? Are they then going to remove those videos? Because apparently it is offensive to oppose socialism. <laughs> That's honestly how ridiculous it's got, right? That is, right? What what could be deem deemed offensive these days? Take, for example, what if, what if my video saying that the NHS should be privatised, what if that video took off? Are they saying that because some people would find it offensive, that it should be banned, that it should be banned, anybody who supports the privatisation of the NHS should be silenced. <laughs> if that's not fascism, what, what is? <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, as you say, Daniel... Will you debunk? No, uh, is that non? N Sorry, I can't even. Norva Media. Novara Media. Novara Media. I've never actually heard of Novara Media. Um, I'll I'll look that up and I'll I'll take note of that as well. Um. Because obviously, like I said, me see see these video requests I've got. There's one video request I'm going to do on the mainstream media, 
why it just seems so biased towards the left as I was requested to do that, as Junaid had asked me to do that, and I will do that as well. I think another one was I was requested to do some more on um, the Finnish Bolshevik. So, you know, I'll, I'll look into that that as well. Um, I don't know... I don't know whether to go into more on Vicky nineteen ninety nine because one of the videos that you know she brought up to me was something about the deaths that capitalism caused. But the reason why I don't feel the need to is because I've already done a video response on that subject and respond to somebody else, and it's like beating a dead horse. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's um, and that's the thing. I mean, someone says to me, "Oh, definitions mean nothing." See if de- see if definitions meant nothing, there would be no requirement for the English language dictionary. Um, and I'm not saying it means everything, but of course it holds importance. So yes, I will, of course, do. Um, I will. I will definitely look into that. Um. So thank you, uh, Daniel. I will, I will certainly look into that because uh, I've never, I've never heard of, you know, them. Because um, you've got to remember, I, w- I wasn't, you know, frequent on YouTube, so to speak. So I may have missed out a lot of, you know, channels that may have just newly came about and 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 stuff like that. But I, that's never a bad thing to me because there's always new content that's always coming out and and new arguments and and you know I, I I like that. Um so I will look into that. Uh so yeah I mean it's going to, like I said, I mean in terms of this this video alone, it's gonna take considerable time for me to sit and edit through. Um I I actually use a well they call it a four K video downloader. Now, because I'm not using their videos uh, in terms of commercially, I'm not earning from it. I'm just using it for educational purposes. I might get away with it. That is something that I have actually thought about. And I've obviously heard about arguments on intellectual property rights. Now, that's not something within my knowledge. I'm not I'm not as knowledgeable on the, the the issue to do with intellectual property rights. If there's any, uh, if there's any educational content that you know is out there on the the argument on intellectual property rights, I I would be interested to read that. You know, I would, um, and that's that's something that I do I do find interesting because even in relation to my my own photography. Uh, you know, there, there's there's restrictions even with regards. Take for example. Um, let me let me just show you for for an, for an example of what I'm talking about. And you will know it from street photography. I wonder if I've got any. I, I, I should have. Now. I was at, I had to actually do research on this whilst I was creating this book, right? The reason why I had to is because of the fact that I was kind of thinking to myself, well, what if I ever got around to making this a book that I could sell? Well, the only thing is that I would only be able to create so many copies if I got the money around to doing such a thing as that, right? But there's an issue, right? You cannot take photograph or photographs of people, right? And then sell the photographs commercially because you need model releases, right? That's part and parcel of it. You need model releases. And that's why I was thinking, you know, uh, you know I might do a, a video on something specifically to do with that. But let me see, because... I'm pretty sure there is some pictures in here rather than the the ones that I was... Yeah, I mean, this, for example. 
I had taken that photograph on the Messini uh, via Messini in Verona. And it's basically, you can't, it's kind of because of the camera's kind of blurred at the moment. Um, the focus isn't exactly thingied. But just random people. And, it, and, and that's the thing. If I was to try and sell, you have to ask the question, well, at the end of the day, am I going to be able to because I don't have their permission? Or would I get away with it because you're standing on public property? And then you have the issue where you have to look into the, the, the um, your rights within each individual country. Because Italy is obviously a different country with different laws um, than that of, you know, it's obviously a different country with different laws to that of Great Britain, but I found that the, the laws are, are, are very similar in terms of photography. So again, when you're talking about photographing people, then you have that issue. So you have to do that, that sort of research. Now, that's the, the, the thing that I was talking about because it's the same thing with regards to YouTube and everything. Um, you've, you've seen it yourself with so many YouTube content creators on content that they use and, and the rights and copyright and all the rest of this stuff. And it's an interesting argument, so to speak, because I can, I can sympathise with the argument in favour of copyright. I can sympathise with it. Um, it's a, it's quite a it's it's a very difficult thing. But apparently, if you're just doing educational content, then you can get away with doing as such. Um, again, you can. I don't know if I can minimise this a second. I don't know if you can see. I'll just. Minimize this. If you can see here, that's the the video downloader. So I've been downloading a lot of videos, um, and because I'm just going to be using it for educational purposes, then I'll use these videos because it illustrates what I'm talking about. Um, especially the couple arguing or the the groups arguing, because I've got some really interesting videos in there. Because you've, you've got to remember, when you are in groups, right, it's not as simple as just everybody agrees with one another and that's it. So I, I do touch upon that specifically and I had been collecting a, a, a lot of these different resources and whatnot. So, yeah, there's a, a, there's a lot of resource I've had to collect and I'll probably use a lot of my own. Um, I don't know if I've got any videos that I took when I was on holiday, for example, when I went to Rome in 2012. I've got a lot of video from that. I've got, you know, video that I... But I don't know in terms of... I might actually... Such as video of water and stuff like that that I've recorded. Um, as you said, Daniel, do you think that millennials supporting Marxism is iconic when they profited the most from capitalism. Uh, well, that's the thing. I mean, um, it's hypocritical is what it is. It's hypocritical. You cannot... You cannot... support Marxism, right? You cannot claim to support such things uh, and not live up to what you would support in that regard. Um, in other words, they believe in all this... They believe in all this stuff to do with redistribution of wealth and you, how many times have you seen these rich people who claim to be socialists and, and stuff like that and... And they're showing their sheer hypocrisy. You know, the, uh, uh, Jeremy Corbyn is an example. You just call them champagne socialists. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's basically it. 
Um, ironic, yeah. I, I, I should have picked up on that. That's my my fault. What do you think of neoliberalism? Neoliberalism. Yeah, I should actually do a video on that. I should. You know something? That word. And it's just not. It's not your fault. It's not. It isn't your fault. It's a word that pisses me off. Let Let me explain why. This word, neoliberalism, was created by the left wing. It was conjured up out of thin air. And the term neoliberalism is non-existent. There's even a blog post or an article, shall I say, on the Foundation for Economic Education that touches upon this. You know, neoliberalism is just, it's, it's a myth. It, it's, it's non-existent. It's, it's every bit as mythical as that of trickle-down economics, right? Um, neoliberalism. From what I gather... I looked into it before and, you know, something stating that there's a transition to capitalism or something like that. And I would constantly hear this term used, this word neoliberal, neoliberalism. And they would use it in reference to Margaret Thatcher. They would use it in, in relation to the 1980s. But at the same time, these same people would, of course, you know call the 1980s a period of free market capitalism. So really what they're saying is, number one, they are saying that you live under capitalism. You should know that by now. That's that's how they, they try to paint it. They try to kid on the free market doesn't exist and that the free market is just basically what you're living under today, that, that, the, that capitalism is what you have today. In other words, corporatism, right? Um, so that's the, that's the first thing. And of course, the second thing is, is in relation to the neoliberalism. Um, they're saying that this neoliberalism is capitalism. Um, and it's not. It's corporatism. <laughs> it's, it's, it's corporatism, right? So really all neoliberalism is, it's, it's basically their made-up version of conjured up out of thin air and, and just just pulled it out of thin air and made it up. That's it. Um, do, 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 do. So many topics, so little time. <laughs> there is. <laughs> there's, there's quite a lot of... There's quite a lot of things, um, especially with recent news. And a lot of people are getting pretty pissed off with the, the lockdown. And I do wonder with, of course, because I had someone who's a hairstylist or something and, and they're concerned about their business. And you and, and I should actually post videos up of it or a video. And I was requested, that's, one, that's another one I'm going to do. I was requested to do a video on direct primary care. And that basically is the free market model of healthcare, right? It's in the United States. It's not well known about. And I was requested to do that um, that video specifically by um, the United Kingdom Independence Party. So, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to do so. You know, I think, I think peop more people need to be aware of it. Um, so uh, that's another video I'm going to do. But in relation to that, I feel that I want to cover that you've probably seen all these videos by now. It's all these TikTok videos of nurses dancing about. I mean, what are they actually doing? They're, they're not giving themselves, they're not doing themselves any favours. A lot of people get really pissed off by it. <laughs> they... Well, they're doing us a favour. <laughs> Let's just privatise it. <laughs> so, if you... <laughs> Let's see. Yes, exactly, they are corporatists. And as you said, the status quo of the United States 
is corporatist, neoliberal are in favour of the status quo. Precisely. Precisely. And that's that's sadly what the United States is today. You know, um, I've never actually been to the United States. You know, I've always wanted to go. I've always had admiration. Um, obviously, because a lot of my childhood, I've got a lot of memories from, you know, programmes, everything, you know. There's obviously some influence in there. And, you know, that's... I think I think that's that's actually part of the reason why I took so much interest in, in studying the American history. Um and and you, you do hear a lot about the American history and stuff like that. I would you know, don't get me wrong, I would love to learn even, you know, stuff about things like Australia and, and, and whatnot and and some other countries and, and, and stuff and I do even have a a book on you know Canada and and stuff, but I think Canada's kind of well, they've kind of gone down the road as <laughs> it's like the Scotland of North America. <laughs> um, let's see what what comments am I may have missed out. As you said. Uh, Chris, what's your opinion on Yaren Book? Y- Yaren Brook. I came across Yaren Brook a good few years ago, and it was a friend who shared one of his videos. I think the video was was. I think his video was on something to do with capitalism and anti-Semitism, the Ayn Rand Institute. I haven't read any of Ayn Rand's books, but I do find the argument on the objectivism quite interesting. I do, and and I I want to read more of it. You know, um, well, learn more about the objectivism uh, I don't know, but Yaren Brook, you know, he he has produced a lot of really good content, you know, and he, he's he's a very intelligent man. Um, I've enjoyed a, a lot of his arguments defending capitalism. So, you know, I I I like his content. You know, he he certainly knows what he's talking about. He understands capitalism. Um, and it, I remember watching a video of him giving a lecture to kids. And <laughs> Like I said earlier on, you know, you always get that patronising tone from socialists, unfortunately, and it's very difficult to deal with that. Some people who have got that personality can, you know, just brush over it. But... There was two kids in the the crowd that we were speaking to, and it was something to do with the poverty and the late and not the labour camp, sorry, the the sweatshops. You probably know the video, but yeah, it was a very good video, and his argument was fantastic. He had he he has a way of making such a strong argument that gets people, you know, thinking. Which I, I I like, and I w- I would actually like to get that one of his books um, that was on capitalism. I can't remember which what it was. It was quite a number of year ago, but I think it was a video that was recommended to me. I, I do I do like his stuff. Um, as you said, Daniel, what do you think of Labour using? Austerity as an insult to the Conservatives. Okay, let me say this first and foremost, right? What does it mean to be austere? To be austere is something severe. Austerity would be living within your means. Okay? That that's what austerity would be. Let's be honest here. That's 
That's what austerity would be. To be austere. Right? To basically live within your means. So here's the question. How the hell can you have austerity and have a deficit at the same time? <laughs> that's, that's arse end backwards. You, 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 can't, you, you cannot overspend and then, <laughs> and then basically be austere. Right? So that's why I've got a problem with that argument. Right? So whenever Labour and they always come out with this, and it was the same. How often did you hear this? Never, even even in this is because this is separate, right? But it's the same language, and I should add this into the mainstream media, right? This is what they do constantly, on the build up to the to the to Brexit, right? To Brexit, we we had to fight for that, right? In fact, it it, it got so bad. We had to even call for a general election in order to bloody well clarify democracy, right? <laughs> As if winning the, the, the 2016 referendum wasn't enough. Uh, they tried to overthrow all of that, as you know. But um, the whole thing, right? With, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, the, the austerity, right? They use these, you know, words in the mainstream media and they repeat it over and over and over and over. Why do they do that? Because the more that you repeat it, the more people will believe it, right? As if it's gospel, as if it's the truth. For example, what did the mainstream media come out repetitively with? Oh, we will crash out crash out. We'll crash out of the European Union. We'll crash out. Everything's crash out. You know, I know a deal Brexit, we will crash out. Crash out, crash out, crash out. And it was on just about every time you turned the TV on. Just about every news programme. Doesn't even matter whether it was Good Morning TV or some fucking... <laughs> or BBC News or Sky News or fucking everywhere you turn to. Right? You would hear the crash out and they would use it over and over and over and over. You felt like just taking the television and sticking your head through it. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, that's what they do. And it's a tactic, it's a strategy and it works. It works on the people who cannot think for themselves. Because it's just like Goebbels had said, you know, if you say something over and over and over, people will start to begin to believe as if it's the truth. <laughs> and that's that's what they do. And that's exactly what they do. That's what the Labour Party do. Because let's face it, politics is a game, folks. Politics is a game. These politicians are not being truthful. Okay, I hold more faith in the Conservative Party. I do. I've got more. I've got more faith in the Conservative Party. I don't believe that the Conservatives are being wholly truthful. For example, on things like the NHS. Of course, they're going to come out in the mainstream media to people, you know, across the whole of, you know, society. Take for example, Turning Point UK, recently interviewed. Um, and I, I should actually do that with some people, but <laughs> Turning Point UK interviewed um, Steve Baker, who I'm a great admirer of. Um, Steve Baker was kind of saying that, well, he didn't want to answer the question on healthcare. Well, what's that saying? He's basically saying... I'm not going to answer it because my answer is pretty obvious. I want to privatise it. Because <laughs> right? it would get me into a lot of trouble. But one of the important points that he said as an MP, and this is the point you have to grasp, he said that <laughs> he said that he would not say what he wanted because he has to stick with the party 
the party line, in other words, right? That's important to know. Because if you go through each one of those individuals, each one of those MPs, Boris Johnson or Steve Baker or Marc Francois or any of them, right? They're not being wholly truthful. But I can I can understand why. Because what what would happen if you were to come out and speak the truth to average Joe public? For example, come out and say to average Joe Public, yeah, I think what we should do, I think we should privatise the NHS. <laughs> the opinion polls would fucking plummet. <laughs> the, the sad thing is, people don't like the truth. They don't. They, they say they want the truth, you give them the truth, they don't like it. They don't. And that's another thing I should touch upon on a healthcare video. Another healthcare video. The one to do with the... Um, the one to do with the direct primary care. The NHS in this time period, in this lockdown, there's no greater time period to prove that the NHS really, really is cultist. Really cultist. I saw, you know, even all over... You know, I'm a Rangers supporter, right? I, I fucking... I, I adore my fucking football club. I, I fucking... I was born into Rangers, right? I fucking love the football club. It's, you know, it's a big part of me, right? It is a big part of me. I love my football club, right? I've supported them all my life, right? Now... Here's the thing. Even all over, you know, Rangers football club groups and etc. And you would see Ibrook Stadium with the letters NHS in the seats. And then you would get, you know, these what do you call them? Is it murals or or I don't I don't know what you call them, right? They're the what they are are these large paintings right that you paint on the side of buildings these large paintings and there was one picture and I, I shit you not a picture one half of it was a, a soldier right fighting in war now this is quite sad right I'm not disrespecting our soldiers you know, all those American soldiers and British soldiers and others who put their life in their line to fight for this country, to even fight for that, to, to fight against the Nazism, you know, I've got nothing but admiration and respect for them, right? And and, and I, I respect the purpose of why you would have a military and etc, etc, etc. I'm against war, as you know. And you could look at, of course, war as something cultist in, in, in of itself. You see people with all these tattoos and everything. It becomes somewhat of a... Um, how do you explain it? It, 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 it? it becomes somewhat more than just a part of memory. Okay, so what I'm saying is there's nothing wrong that people... That there's nothing wrong that people remember those brave soldiers nothing wrong with that that's good that's an, a, a nice gesture but you almost get this sense and feeling that part of the the whole thing around war becomes so cultist in of itself right and, and i don't i it's i can't explain it I cannot explain it. I can't put it into words. You probably know what I'm talking about. Right? You probably do. Right? Now, there was one half of the picture <laughs> painted on the wall of a soldier. Right? And on <laughs> the other half of the wall was a nurse standing, you know, up to this big sort of 
you know, coronavirus sort of thing, you know, with bravery. And I'm thinking to myself, how can you even compare the two? That's no disrespect to these nurses. You know, I've got nothing but respect for all the doctors and nurses that do the wonderful work that they do. They do amazing work for what they do. And even for those who work in the NHS, because it's, it's very difficult conditions, right? And especially to risk your life, especially if you've got a virus and the, the virus is a, a real threat, right? Okay, There's, there, we, we respect that. But when it comes down to the whole thing of this cultist image, and, 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 and next to the nurse in the picture was was basically the NHS painted on the wall, right? The NHS. Now, the NHS really is, it showed in that time period, as a, as a cult. So yes, I mean, there, there's just so much that I could honestly go through on that whole thing, man. It's just... It's, <laughs> honest to God, man. <laughs> uh, as you said, uh, Frederick... You would like great economics uh, teacher. My economics teacher has a degree in US history, but economics is his hobby, and he teaches my college credit economics class in high school. Interesting. Um, I, I, I always, you know, I'm always critical of of the education system, but I would... I would, you know, and that's the thing. I would, I would more than love to. I wouldn't call it interview. That sounds too professional. <laughs> but I would like to, you know, have people on video and go through a series of questions that would get them to explain their own experience. Like, for example, take your take yourself for example. I think a lot of my own viewers would find it interesting to what your lecturer or your teacher teaches. Because a lot of the time, these teachers and these colleges and universities, because they're two separate things here in the United Kingdom, they're not the same thing. But the colleges and universities in Great Britain, you have a lot of these ones who are indoctrinating people with a lot of anti-capitalist nonsense. You probably know that yourself anyway. You get a lot of that even in the United States. So yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, that's something I would like to cover. And I, I remember my friend Patrick mentioned something about the education system massively changed in the United States in the 1970s. I think his mum was a teacher. Um, do, 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 what else have I missed out? Vosh? Ever heard of Vosh? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Have I seen that name before? I'm not entirely sure. Daniel, what do you think of Labour? Oh, I think I've read that one. And of course, John Stossel is great too. Yeah, I, I like John Stossel. You know, I, I've, I always love his, you know, we documentary clips that he goes out to these places even I think he went I don't know if he went out to Hong Kong um they must have sent him out or that and he, he covers a lot of th things and uh John Stossel is 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 fantastic he covers a lot of really good stuff I enjoy his content um I haven't seen anything of recent uh because obviously I had been absent on YouTube but um Yes, I do. I do enjoy the content he provides, and as you said, Kevin, Yaren, Brooks, books, equal is unfair and free market. Free market revolution. That's the one. Thank you for pointing that out, Kevin. Uh, the free market revolution book is the definitely the one I would love to get. You know, I'd love to get his book on that. Um, and Equal is Unfair. I think that would be a really interesting book. And 
the likes of Jordan Peterson have a greater deal of knowledge, perhaps, on those things than I do. The reason being is because they understand more of the, the psychology, especially Jordan Peterson. He is, you know, fantastic for... for he, he has literally taken feminists and absolutely slapped their argument. Absolutely destroyed their arguments. <laughs> I remember watching him on, I don't know if it was like Good Morning TV or something like that, and there was this woman just sitting there. And he's just so brutal. He, he literally tears the argument apart of the feminists. Um, and, and that... You know, that's the reason why I like to, to read these things, because you always come across it. It's always about this equality. But what I can say you say to you from my knowledge, equality meant equal opportunity. It did not mean anything to do with that. And like uh, Thomas G. De Lorenzo pointed out, between 1840 to 1900, you know, the wealth remained the same. There was no dangerous concentration of wealth in the hands of the few. That was a myth. And even you can find statistics that show that from a survey, um, Federal Reserve Boards... OK, we get the point. Um, you could question that one. But, um, of course, the, the, what was that? the wages of people between 1975 to 1991 across 50,000 families that were surveyed, and the bottom 20%, most of them moved up into the, the, the higher brackets, moved up by about $27,000 plus, whilst the richest percentile only increased by $4,000 plus in that same time period. So, you know, you're always going to get this myth. The myth that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And you you'll remember a video that I did, and there was a video I responded to Hakim, and it was in response to world poverty, and you always get that that argument, and it's 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 constant. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, as you said, it's twenty twenty, and people still think Scandinavian countries are socialist. Yeah, they're not. They're not full-blown socialist economies. They, they're very complex. They've got strong economic business freedom. However, the higher tax rates, which is you would say is socialist in their mixed economies, is hurting them. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand because whenever people look at the likes of Norway or Denmark, and I wish I had the figures, but every time, because um, uh, again, Tom De Lorenzo pointed, about, uh, pointed out about it, but Denmark, for example, has a real unemployment figure three times higher than official figures. Now, Everybody looks at the official figures. They don't look at the real figures. Um, they think they're the same thing. But you're absolutely right. The environmentalism. For me, environmentalism should be something that we look after the environment, right? And we constantly find ways to improve the environment but what the environmentalist movement has become today is something based off of no real evidence. Okay, so, you know, they, they want to try and take us away from fossil fuels. But there's been no, no real evidence for them, for the case of, of their argument. In fact, take, for example... They want to move us towards electric motors, right? Electric cars. But as far as I'm aware, the electric cars emit more CO2 than, the, of course, the other cars. So, I mean, the, the, you know what I'm saying? It's, 
and it's not sustainable. That's actually part of the thing that I cover in the economic calculation problem on fossil fuels and the difference on the renewables to that of the non-renewables, you know, uh, that sort of thing. Of course, I did cover um, on the climate change videos I, I did in response. Uh, I can't even remember her name now. Uh, do 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 everybody gangsters Scotty starts cussing. <laughs> um, what else? What other question? Daniel, do you think the spending cuts in the UK was justified? Spending cuts. It's important that people understand there is a strong difference between cutbacks and a spending reduction and this is the one this is one of the things that people confuse a spending reduction is merely a reduction of how much you're spending that's not a cutback people think that's the same thing as cutbacks and it's not and as you know the economy is very complex because there's just so many parts to the economy for all we know, maybe there, there there have been parts of the economy, the economy they may have cut back, but largely, when a decade ago, when your deficit in the United Kingdom ended up over a hundred and fifty-four billion pounds, they had no option but to reduce the deficit. They had to take severe measures. That meant a lot of spending reduction had to take place. I think for a very, very short period of time, they ended up in a surplus, but it didn't last long. And then we ended up in a £25 billion deficit or something like that. And just when you thought, oh, great, they can reverse this. Along comes the fucking pandemic. <laughs> fucking, fucking, a big wave out of nowhere. A big fucking wave out of nowhere saying lockdown. Fucking, I, I, see if I, if I could draw a picture of a big mass of tsunami, a big, a big wave that says on the wave, fucking, <laughs> mass of deficit. <laughs> Right, fucking, fucking big massive, a massive wave just came over and fucking big tsunami. It's like it's ready to just wipe us all out because, sadly, a whole decade of what we thought we finally were going to solve such a problem after such an issue. That. That one lockdown, that one, and I could understand why it happened, but ju just from that alone, that seriously caused an, an, an absolute disaster. It's well, it accelerated the recession that was coming anyway, but it, I, I believe it's it's worse than just the recession. I think some guy on Question Time mentioned about about you know double dip or something and, and, and something about a depression <laughs> God help us if that is the case uh, so yeah I mean it's just it's unfortunate as it is drastic measures have to be taken and that's going to be the case once this lockdown is gone um, currently in Scotland because of the chief mammy the, the chief mammy Nicola Sturgeon the chief mammy who thinks she knows best. Big nanny government always knows best. Uh, and and um, yeah, I think the garden centres are in serious trouble. Because in May, May is supposed to be the best time of the year for the garden season or something like that. Right? Because I, I read this in an article and, and you know this person was calling for Nicola Sturgeon to lift the lockdown for that reason. Um, and it's going to have a, a massive impact on them. 
let's see. Um, as you said, only equal only equality that is legitimate is that of rights. Yes, the equality of rights, the rights to agree to disagree, the negative rights, and I fully support that. Um, I greatly, uh, you know, I I greatly appreciate um, your own party, so to speak. Um, you know, I I I hope the likes of the United Kingdom Libertarian Party and your own UK Liberal Party. I I'm, I really really hope that more and more people catch on to that and. And you know the arguments are the arguments are strong, but there's just so so many people sadly have sadly bought into the the myths that they've been told for so long, especially on the things like the industrial revolution, as you know. But yeah, mm. that's just the issue. So what, what what was the other question? Uh, I think it was Frederick, as you said. What's nice about my economics teacher is that he is Austrian school. That's good. Milton Friedman is his favourite economist. Yeah, I mean, Milton Friedman wasn't particularly an Austrian. But I do, I, do, I you know, for example, I'm, because I'm a minarchist, I'm strongly influenced by both, right? I'm strongly influenced by the likes of your Chicago school, the likes of your, you know, Thomas Sowell, your, well, he's more of the Hoover Institute, but you get the point, it's more your classical liberals like that of your Thomas Sowell or the Milton Friedmans or, you know, I'm, I'm strongly influenced by them. At the same time, I'm strongly influenced by the Austrian school. I appreciate that and I think that's a nice thing to see that a teacher uh, is actually, you know, because that's not common. It's not common in, in the education system. So it's nice to see someone that's Austrian school, uh, so to speak. For example, Tom De Lorenzo based the whole chapter on the myth of the, the myth of the antitrust laws. However, Thomas Sowell is more sympathetic of the antitrust laws, and I don't particularly agree with Thomas Sowell on that. Um, obviously, because of what I've read from Tom De Lorenzo, so I'm, I'm, I would say I'm more influenced by the Austrian school, but at the same time, I, I do find a number of the things that, of course argued by Tom Thomas Sowell, you know, is very logical. Um, yes. Uh, the, the, the other comments have I missed here. As you said, ever responded to Hassan Piker? I've never heard of him. Hassan Piker. Again, I, see these names of... I would need to write them down. Um, especially the, the book on the Soviet Union, I'm going to need to write that down. I'll definitely scroll through the comments section and I'll, I'll you know, after and and uh, take what take a number of these things. Um, I think I would need to look into these names. I mean, Hassan Piker, I can't, I can't say I have. Uh, Daniel... I don't know, because when I move away from this thing, I don't know if you can hear me properly. Obviously, because my voice is kind of... And I can't move this thing the same because of the... Well, I've got this big thing sitting here on the desk because it's a bit, a bit of a pain in the backside. I'll push this back a second. Let's see if I can move this. Yeah, it's kind of stuck. <laughs> right. What what was the question? What do you think of Clement Attlee and how he made the welfare state and how it is affecting the UK today? 
I'm not sure if he was the one. I think from what I recall, there's an interesting video and it was on the Industrial Revolution and it was argued by Ralph Reichel. And Ralph Reichel was, you know, an unbelievable mentor, right? And he'd done a three-hour video on wars and stuff like that. And, he, and in the Industrial Revolution video that he spoke about, he mentioned about um, in relation to Germany and, of course, the 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 war that went on, the three wars that would, you know, be between the libertarian class and that of the the aristocracy, and the aristocracy sadly won, and it's all influenced from that of um, Otto von Bismarck, and 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 I think it was, I think it was in the early twentieth century with regards to Britain, so much earlier than Clement Attlee, I think, because in nineteen thirteen, free trade came to an end. So that was the first thing. We would then eventually see the end of the gold standard here. I don't know if that was around the, the 1920s, 30s. And, of course, you, you would see... Um, how can I forget his name? That's terrible of me. Terrible. Uh, Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill... I'm pretty sure was the one responsible. But I can understand why in in many regards that it was brought around. But you know, it's 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 one of these things that I don't believe any politician is perfect, you know? It's just uh, sadly it's just uh, it really uh, isn't the real world. Um but you know, in terms of the claiming Atley he was damaging to this country. He was seriously damaging. See that? See the heavy nationalisation? Let me tell you this. The heavy nationalisation this country has never gotten over. Not truthfully. Yes, our economy improved. There's no question. And, and Thatcher did have a profound effect on this country, thankfully. She, she had a lasting effect. So much so that even... New Labour, if you want to call them that, <laughs> you know, but with regards to the Labour Party, even a number of them, and I remember there was one Labour Party politician in Scotland, an MSP, and he was fighting for his seat at the time, I think Kezia Douglas had taken it or something, I can't remember the guy, right, I think he's some, somebody McDonald or something, I can't remember, but this guy in the Labour Party, right? This was a Labour Party MSP, right? An MSP is basically, you know, a member of the Scottish Parliament, right? He came out and said, this is a Labour Party MSP as well, he came out and said he supports the privatisation and deregulation, and I'm thinking to myself, what, what did he fucking say? <laughs> what, what, what did he just come out and fucking say? Did, 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 did that just hear a Labour Party MSP come out and say deregulation? <laughs> so, and and some of the arguments that some of them have come out with, it makes me think they've, they've actually been reading Henry Hazlitt, right? So. And I'm surprised about that. I am actually shocked about that. So there has been a lasting effect, but most of the Labour Party MSPs and MPs, etc., they don't understand. Um, so I, I think I think that you know Clement Attlee did have the damage, however, because let me show you this graph. Let me show you this graph. Where, where did I put the? There it is. Wait and you'll see this graph. I need to get this one up, man. Right? This this one you need to see. I'll even I'll fucking implement it in a fucking video. <laughs> I have to. Um was it the first page? 
Let's see, was it chapter one? See if I can find it. Wait. I don't know. I, I, this figure one, support for public ownership by sector percentage. Right, here's a, here's an interesting graph. This one's still quite interesting. Can you see that? Oh, come on, man. Focus. Can you see that? Look at that. How... <laughs> You know, it, it, it is sad. It's it's you know part of this book is pretty depressing when you see things like that. Honestly, it is it's depressing. There's, there's I th I'm pretty sure this is on low battery level. Here's one. Figure two. Support for public ownership by sector in percentage. Again, it's quite depressing. That, I don't know if this thing's going to focus, is it? Can you make that out? Come on, come on. There you go. Uh, look at that. <laughs> that's, that's fucking depressing. <laughs> that, that makes you want to, That makes you want to tip top yourself. <laughs> but here's one. Here's one that will make you want to put yourself through the window. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one that makes you want to put your your computer through the window, right? Look at this. I should do a video specifically solely on this, right? Look at this. If you cannot read what it, because this thing's focusing and not focusing, focusing and not focusing, it's just irritating. But if you cannot read it, it says gas and electricity. And I'm pretty sure that is on the... What was the other one? I'm reading it backwards. Public transport. Yeah. Gas and electricity, public transport, uh, rents, and food and uh, groceries. Right? Now, what you can basically see, people in Great Britain today are strongly in support of gas and electricity price controls and public transport price controls. <laughs> I mean, why? Why? Just why? You know, these are the same people who piss and moan about the private sector costs of their transportation. And then they blame the private sector. They blame the private sector. But there they are supporting... <laughs> there they are supporting the, 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 the bloody... The, the price controls. What's wrong with this country? <laughs> why? Fucking why? It's, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's, uh... See, when you look at things like that, it's so depressing. You know, because it shows you the reality of the problem that exists in this country today. What's wrong with people? The price controls does not make it more affordable. It makes it more expensive. You can't artificially drive a price down. You can't do it. So, let me see what other comments. Um... As you said, uh, libertarians are real minority rights activists because there's no smaller minority than the individual. Yeah, exactly. UKLibertyParty.org, indeed. Uh, and I'm glad that obviously people like yourself certainly exist. Um, I don't know why... Uh, all right, it was... Some of the comments here just says you're attracted, that's all. Uh, as you said, the rich gets richer, the poor also gets richer. Yeah. Um, in fact, the, the poor got richer faster, even throughout the 19th century. The poor were the, the, poor were the, 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 the ones who most uh, gained from the Industrial Revolution. And... and <laughs> 
the way that these schools paint the Industrial Revolution paints an exact opposite. And it doesn't help when when most of your historians out there don't understand economics and they're the ones that are, that are writing the, the history on these things and you get the point. Do, do, do. As you said, uh, please debunk... Is, it, is that grime for Corbin? I would need to look that up. Is that a video? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that, Daniel. I will. I'll definitely look into that. Thanks for the recommendation, and I'll, I'll definitely. I'll need. To, I'll, what I'll do, I'll need to take note of that. Um, I hope that these comments will be in the final video. Um, it should be. Um, and and what I'll do is I'll I'll note down these things and and so that I I can remember, um so that would be actually quite interesting because I you know I haven't done any uh, of anything of recent that's you know in relation to Corbyn, you know when you when you looked at the Labour Party manifesto under Jeremy Corbyn, the manifesto for um, becoming you know as you know they fought the general election there in December. One of the, the policies that they were proposing was a tax on people's gardens as well as rent controls. We all know why he was supporting that one. Because the rent controls benefit the rich. <laughs> In other words, benefiting themselves. <laughs> Champagne socialist. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I definitely will do that. Frederick, I've read Henry Hazlitt's book, Economics in One Lesson. Very informative. Yeah, it's a fantastic book. I think what is so good about his book, it's very short. It's very concise. Each chapter is just it's straight to the point. You know, it, it, it's not it's not like this type of book that chapters can go on and on and on and on you know he all, all he does is he he basically cuts straight to the point on each you know argument and, and and because it's just so concise it's simple enough for people just to pick up and read and and, and learn and it's not it's not difficult to understand it's very simple i mean even he he even starts off with arguably one of the most important things, the broken window fallacy. And you can see the, the argument of the broken window fallacy in all sorts of things, never mind just about wars, about the destruction, but you could also partially use that on the same argument when people talk about free things, but they don't see what goes on in the background. So... You know, it's it's a it's a fantastic book. Um, as you said, Daniel, Grime for Corbyn is cringe. It's a bunch of teenagers supporting Jeremy Corbyn for Prime Minister, and they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I've seen a lot of them on the news and stuff like that, and uh. Jeremy Corbyn sympathisers are, are, are away on a planet on their own. And the, and the thing is, they were actually thinking that these rent controls are a good thing. They buy into all of that. And I bet you anything, I bet you anything, Jeremy Corbyn is an actor. I bet you anything Jeremy Corbyn knows fine well that those rent controls would benefit himself and not the poor. I bet you anything he knows that. Um, so in other words, what I'm saying about Jeremy Corbyn is he's not as for the people. He's not as what he makes himself out to be. The, the one who, uh, how do I put it? Yeah, sure he is incompetent, of course. No question. But he, he, there, there's, there's something about him that you get from him. He's not wholly as honest as he makes himself out to be, in other words. 
um, especially on things like the IRA, etc. You know, is very dangerous, man. Um, just look at his sympathy of. Uh, he, he called what was it? Che what? Not not Che Guevara. Sorry, Chavez, Hugo Chavez. You know, he he was making him out to be this democratic revolutionary. This this great man. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, as you said, uh, Karl Marx was a racist. He was a self-hating, self-loathing Jew, if I remember right. He he hated Jewish people. Um, again, I, I remember someone shared with me a, 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 a website that showed you all of the comments or all the quotes, shall I say, by Karl Marx and, and his racist um, comments and everything like that. And, and, and yes, I mean, because you know yourself, these socialists always try to push racism off onto fascism, but oh well, they're not racist. But, well, Karl Marx proved otherwise. <laughs> um, indeed. As you said, take notes of my recommendation too, please. Indeed, I will. Yes. Yes, I will. Um, because I definitely want to, you know, get around to doing those videos. I just thought I would pop on here, number one, because of the fact that I thought I would give this a test to make sure, number one, that the the webcam is still working and, and that, you know, I can easily set up and do these things. Um, the second reason, I just wanted to address the point on that comment I got earlier on, somebody claiming I'm stupid and all the rest of this, and um, and basically trying to say that, you know, using definitions and trying to conflate co collectivism, because this is the thing, the person commented on that video and says that I'm stupid and illiterate for apparently conflating socialism with collectivism. Well, no, I'm not. I've studied socialism. I've, I've studied socialism. Uh, and and if you look at socialism, it isn't just fixed to a theory. It's um you you can correlate socialism strongly with collectivism. There's a reason it's synonymous. It's it's more than just looking at the definition. In other words, it's more than just looking at the synonyms. It's more than just looking at the definition of socialism. It's more than just looking at the definition of collectivism in order to understand why, because once you look at the once you look deeper into socialism and you get to understand what it is, there's only a, a small part of socialism that really isn't, you know, in relation to other things. But the majority of things like central planning, for example, or, you know, the political centralization, it, it strongly pertains to things like feudalism, etc. So... You know, it's just it's one of these things. I would have accepted the person's comment and left it be, but the person was just trying to insult me, so I just thought to myself, fuck that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I definitely will take note of that. Uh, views on Ash Sarkar. Where have I heard that name before? Ash Sarkar. I can't I can't pass comment because I'm not entirely sure. Um I'll need to look that up. I'll def I'll I'll definitely look that up. Um Daniel. I've I've I'm I'm pretty sure I've seen that name somewhere. I'm not entirely sure where. There's something rings a bell with, with it. Uh, as you said, Democratic Socialist 01 claimed that Venezuela is not socialist. Or, uh, you know, he would he used to go under the name Mr. Rico 12. Do you want to know how he came across me? There was a YouTuber, and I don't know if he still posts the videos, but the artist taxi driver. 
I think his name is Marcus Cowan. I think that's his name. Marcus Cowan or whatever, right? And I remember Marcus Cowan, in other words, the artist taxi driver, had Alex Jones and... What's his name? He does, you know, a lot of the stuff to do with... I don't know if it's the stock market and whatnot. And he's he's quite interesting. Um, anyway... He had Alex Jones in the car, and Alex Jones was basically, you know, explaining to him that it's not capitalism, it's cronyism, right? And despite the fact even telling him that, and him being clueless, right? Even after that interview, he's still claiming the same thing. Well, anyway, I came across Mr. Rico 12 because of that because of the, the comment section when I was posting um, in, in relation. And he he became obsessive about my, my channel because, obviously, I was anti-socialist. And I got into a number of the arguments, and I, I got into the argument on the economic calculation problem. I completely flattened him. The video is still there on um, Right Wing Federation's channel. Um, they've actually still got my, my video sitting on there and the funny thing is <laughs> the funny the, the funny part is the fact that he never came back with a response on that because he couldn't he tried to swear around it in all sorts but you 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 are de see 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 democratic socialist oh one he is your hardcore and what is so contradictory about him you know he claims to be this democratic socialist but if you critique communism, he will get all upset about it. That's because the real true face of what he actually supports is communism, right? Never mind this idea of democratic socialism. There is no such thing. They, they only hide behind that name because it, it, it's convenient to try and pull the wool over people's eyes. But he, he is one of your hardcore. He's one that, you know... No matter the facts, reason, the logic, that it's it's a religion to him to blame capitalism, and the fact that he goes as far as to deny the fact that Venezuela was socialist. <laughs> these people are. That's the reason why you could end up losing your mind. You know, it's it's very difficult not to. Because you you are honestly dealing with people who are the most irrational minded people you could ever meet you know it's just it's unbelievable what some of these people come out with um as you said you can't have authoritarianism without socialism absolutely correct as you said you can't have yeah exactly and then, you, Daniel, as you say, views on leftist bias in the UK education. Um, I suppose that's um, another thing. I mean, it's when you go through the education system, it's all leftist. And I'm, I'm not joking. You know, I, right, this is photography. You know, of course, creative industries are just rancid with it, unfortunately. You know, you you go out there, find another photographer, right? Now, I became a photographer from the perspective of, of supporting capitalism, right? And what the hell do you think created all the photography lenses, all the tripods, all the the camera gear, etc., the actual camera bodies themselves? What created all of that? capitalism but in the creative industries it's rancid with all these socialists right my class was full of socialists right full of them uh, in, in fact it got it got to a point where i ended up getting suspended because of a an argument that broke out and uh, a problem for about three weeks or something like that it's long gone anyway who cares right and when it came to the photography course, and, I, you know, he's a nice enough guy, right? He's a nice enough guy. And 
I got the impression that he would never give up his private business, right? I got that impression. But the the lecturers, of course, and I can understand sympathetically on the problem, but they would they would of course be part of trade unions or la- or what you would call labor unions or whatever. Anyway, um even within my photography course, you had hints of socialist propaganda, you know, pushing through. Whether it was trying to get us to look at Bresion and learn the history of Bresion and how great he is and all the rest of us, and he just happened to be a bloody Marxist, right? But that's not the reason. The reason is that out of nowhere, when it came to the introduction, the, the introduction to the course, sitting in class, and the lecturer, you know, you know, tries to crack the joke, and it's some anti-conservative, you know, comment that was made. The anti-Tory rhetoric. I, 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 I hope nobody is a, a, a Tory in here or something like that. Just, you know, the the typical anti-Tory rhetoric that you hear, right? Coming from the lecturer and and everybody, you know, all the students, what what the hell do they know? I mean, they they are actually, you know, clapping along with it. And when it came to me, even when I was going for my graduation, right? When I graduated and I showed up and it it was sitting... You know, waiting to go up and you know shake the guy's hand, take my certificate, you know, and and walk off and all the rest of it. I had to sit there and listen to this student. Now, of course, the student was first introduced of how how I don't know stu- part of the student unions or something. I don't fuck no, it's right. She was picked to stand up and and you know, give this speech, and it was just this long, tiring, you know, this this speech that would put you to sleep, right? And it was basically going on about, you know, fighting for free tuition and free education and free this and free this, that, and the next thing, and free, 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 free and free. You know, they could just sitting there listening to me, a Marxist and other words. <laughs> Why did, why on earth did the guy who you're supposed to go up and shake hands with, why bring politics into it? I'm there to collect my certificate. I'm not there to listen to your politics. I'm not there to listen to your socialism. <laughs> that is the sad thing. You can, Even if you're studying a subject that's got nothing to do with politics, They've always got to try and ram it right down your throat. Even in photography. Even when it came to the business aspect of it. They're talking about how, you know, the importance of government and, and, and how we need government in the public sector and all the rest of this for the business aspect. And I'm thinking to myself, that just simply is not true. It's not true. Uh, but, you know, most students believe it. It's just it's it's sad that is sadly the case. This is it's um what do you do when your teachers are all socialists? <laughs> and and trust me, students are not going to listen to you. They're 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 going to listen to the, the, the lecturers themselves, even if the lecturers don't have a clue. You know that yourself. Um unfortunately. As you say, collaborate with a libertarian YouTube called My Two Cents. I know, I know who you're talking about. Um, if if the if the individual comes across, then I would be more than happy to. The only reason why I haven't done a, a, you know collaboration and stuff like that, I just I don't really understand how you go about it. You know, what I mean, I don't understand. You know, that's the only thing. Maybe I could actually, you know, figure out. And however, uh, as you said, 
chunky Mark the Bell end. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how you try to actually get across the information to that guy. It just goes in one ear and into the other. And I don't, I don't know if he's still posting videos. Yeah, I, I really don't know. Um, I couldn't tell you to, to be honest with you. Um, Daniel, as you say, views on contrapoints. See, see contrapoints. Contrapoints bought into a lot of propaganda, but to be fair to contrapoints, you know, that person was more than willing at the end to say that they're willing to to accept if they're wrong on something. The, in other words, contrapoints wasn't someone who would come out as as this um as a fanatic of socialism, you know, the the type like your democratic socialist or one. Um, and that's what I respect about contrapoints. I didn't respond to a lot of the comments I was getting, um, but a lot of people don't understand consumer preference. That's actually something that I cover on my recent my newest video um I, I do cover on consumer preference and i will it will add in a lot of that stuff that that, that ties in and I, I did mention contrapoints and in, in that regard so that's actually uh, something um as you said the only good thing about jason Nunaru is that he hates social justice warriors i didn't actually know that um a lot of a lot of Marxists seem to be against them. I've noticed that. You ever noticed how the left you know are caught that you know maybe that's actually a separate topic actually that I could do a video on. How the left are always at odds with one another. And it somewhat correlates to the conflicts of interest that I cover in my new video. But you will always find leftists are always fighting with one another. Have you ever noticed that? Over, you know, there's so many things. So many things. But it's, and it, the reason be, being is because there's always there's, there's, there's always something that contradicts them. And and they end up eating one another. <laughs> I think that's actually part of the reason why the Labour Party <laughs> lost out. As uh, you said, Kevin, um, they're all forms of collectivism. The battle is collectivism versus individualism. Precisely. Precisely. Uh, and it's just it's one of these things. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. hello, uh, back alley. Good to see that you're still kicking around, and I'm glad to see that. Yeah, I know it's actually the first time I've, I've, well, in a very, 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 very long time, I would say. Because I think the last time I went live, that it was a lot more complicated. But this seems a bit easier. Um, and since it was there, I just thought I would, you know, I, I do it on Facebook. So I just thought to myself, why not post something up and tell you guys what's happening and and and, and stuff like that. And you know, I, I thought I would do that. Uh, as you say, do, 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 do. I didn't know I did you here. I, I, see, I see you two certainly know one another. Uh, cool. As you said, uh, well, oh, sorry, I can't pronounce it. Is it King of Wakanda? Uh, Colleges are socialist havens. You're absolutely right. You are honestly spot on. You know, I was singled out. That's what they will do to you, right? I was friendly to them. 
I did not go into college. I did not, you know, I did not go into college and um, and mention anything about my political views. It wasn't until one break time, I was walking with them because most of them were younger than me, of course. I think one of the older ones was about 24 years old or something, right? Um, when I was studying there, I was about 34. Wasn't it 30, 33, 34? 34, I would say, or 35. Can't can't remember. No, 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 no. It's 2017, 16. I can't remember specifically. Early 30s, probably. Anyway, older than them. And, I, 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 you know, they started bringing up politics. And I think it was in relation to do with the Scottish independence, right? I could I could hear from their arguments they were strongly in favour of Scottish independence, right? Now, all it took was for them to see my Facebook. They added me on Facebook and I knew immediately what was going to happen because they, they, they would not like my arguments, right? They wouldn't like it because I'm strongly anti-socialist. And I would never hide, never hide from that. Never. Because socialism is wrong. It's immoral. It's evil. Right? And as soon as they found out my views, they immediately started to distance from me. Their own form of social distancing. Right? Now, in class, you know, projects, you are kind of having to do, you know, these teamwork things and projects and things like that and I could see the awkwardness in these people you know they treat you like as if you're a contagious disease that's all it takes I don't mean, funny enough the person had blue hair <laughs> you know why I'm laughing at that one um, and I'm not talking about one in my class but there was a boy and we, we went, obviously, for drinks and whatnot. Just it was, I think this was nearer the end of college. And we were sitting down and we're drinking outside. And it was in some, you know, garden sort of bar place in, in Glasgow. Um, right? Sitting having a pint. And there was this, you know, sort of semi-overweight, blue-haired kid, I didn't know who he was and um, and that you know, that, that boy was just not not him, right, not him, but the other boy was just asking me a simple question obviously uh, and it was something about I, I can't even remember, but obviously it was brought up about the Conservatives or something and I think as soon as, as, soon as this boy you know, found out that I sympathised and, and voted the Conservatives. His reaction was like from just calm to basically almost taking a fucking heart attack. Like, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like it's looking at me is like, like some overly emotional response of you've just fucking triggered them just by saying, "Yeah, I, I, I voted the Conservative Party in the in the such and such and such and such," and he's, he's basically. <laughs> So the kid, the kid looks at me, like he's about to take a heart attack. It's like, oh my god, oh oh my god, he he doesn't support socialism. <laughs> That's all it takes, folk. That's all it takes. You don't even need to, you 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 don't even need to be nasty to them. All it you could be as friendly you could you could be as friendly as you are. Doesn't matter how friendly you are, right? You could be the friendliest person, right, around. But as soon as they figure out your views, it's like, oh my god, I'm gonna take a heart attack. And that that's that's sadly the case. Ah, it's just it's quite sad, man. It's quite sad. Um but yeah, they, they, they honestly are socialist havens. Marxists have to uh, infight because their philosophy doesn't have any tangible 
as you say, conceptual truths, precisely. Would you consider conservatives capitalist? Yes and no. Um, yes, in the sense that you do have the likes of Steve Baker, Marc Francois, you know, the likes who are strongly influenced by free markets. You do have a, a free market... Um, you do have a pressure group inside the conservatives that people might not know about, which is the free market for conservatives. They are conservatives for liberty. That's what they're called, conservatives for liberty. Um but not all conservatives. But I know where you're coming from, and you're coming from about the actual conservative party. So the answer is kind of mixed. It's kind of yes and no, because in 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 action, they're kind of forced to do what is not capitalist, unfortunately. But there are a number of capitalist-minded people in the conservatives, and 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 you know, it's just it's it's how it is. Um. As you say, back alley thoughts on Redrick Long. I haven't. I, I, again, I can't say I know the the name. I didn't actually look up these names. Um, views on Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle. Now, I, I certainly, <laughs> I certainly know that one. <laughs> oh, um, what can I say about her? Uh, you know, I feel sorry for Prince Harry. I feel sorry for him because of the fact that he's under the thumb. And um, he's under the thumb and he doesn't seem to... He, he doesn't seem to have a way out of that. And she's very... She came across as very Marxist. And I'm not going to say she's a bad person, you know. I, I, I personally, I don't hate her. I don't have anything against her. For all I know, she could be a, a really nice person and stuff like that. But sorry, but in terms of her, her, her views, no, no, definitely I, against her views. You know, um, as you said, we should abolish public schools. Yes, a hundred percent. Again, I, I did a video on part of the history um, to do with the uh, schools and yeah I, I agree with you um, as you said or Sheldon Richmond quite an interesting few names there I, I, I certainly don't know um, again I'll, 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 I'll look these names up um, respond to the progressive voice about taxation. Progressive voice. Again, I don't know that name. Progressive voice. I'll look that up and I'll, I'll certainly add that to a list. And uh, especially on taxation, you know my my position. The thing is, uh, you know, I will concede to the fact that I would have to support some form of taxation since uh, I'm a minarchist. But I would not support some heavy progressive income tax. I would the furthest I would go is a ten percent flat tax rate, and it would not be an income tax. <laughs> it would not be an income tax, not not some because it's a, it's progressive, and I I don't I don't I don't support all of that. And I would probably abolish a, a number of things that you know, protectionist tariffs and all the rest of it, that, you know, that's that's all of what I would support. Yeah, I'm, I'm very close to being anarchist. <laughs> very close to it. Um, uh, as you said, Daniel, have you heard of another Scottish YouTuber called Cal... Cal... Calamati? Kelamati? No, I haven't. I haven't. Um, there's, there's another name I would need to look up. Kelamati. That's quite interesting. Um, as you said, you could, you, you should criticise Republicans like Tucker Carlson and Ben Shapiro. 
because I've not really looked much into their arguments. Um, the whole, the, and, that, and that's the thing, I haven't really looked much into their arguments because of the fact any time I've looked at either, well, mostly Ben Shapiro, it's only been targeting looking for his economic arguments, not on his arguments to do with uh, the libertarian stuff. Uh, let me click this thing up here. Yes, I mean, that's just, just one of those things that I haven't really looked into too much in that, shall, shall I say. Um, but, I've, I've, you know, something positive out of this live feed is the fact that I've, I've managed to get some good um, feedback from yourselves and, and, you know, recommendations, shall I say. Um, so I'm definitely... Uh, yeah, I'll definitely um, do more live feeds um, and, and certainly that will help. Uh, as you said, uh, we don't need the government at all. We have natural law, which is what we anarchists believe instead of state-enforced law. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm not against anarchists. And I, I, the, the thing I find so sad about the libertarian movement is I see certain people who... <sighs> there is certain infighting. At least from the libertarian perspective, it's not the same as what you get with the socialists, but... Um, for me, you know, at the end of the day, I will support all positions whether people support classical liberalism or minarchism or anarchism and 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 and, and I don't have anything against people you know I, I, I really don't have anything against people in their in their own perspective and their views um as far as I'm concerned we're all on the same page we're all fighting for the free market um I know that some people have these arguments about what would best protect a free market, that being anarchy or or minarchism or whatever. Um, okay, I mean, I can understand that. But for me, all libertarians that support capitalism are all on the same page, and I think that's the way, that's the mentality that people should have. You know, that's why I've never... I've I've never thought to myself, oh, um, I feel I feel at any odds with people who support capitalism and and have a different position from myself. Um, interesting the name, Sean. Debunking Sean, is that in relation? Hang on. Did I miss? It's just actually looking at the comments here. I was trying to figure out who that Sean is. Did you mention his name earlier on in the comments? Um, Sean, I could do a, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's any, any video responses, you know, I'm, I'm happy to do. This one's going to take long though, because the fact that, of how much, how, the length of the video and the amount of clips I've got you add in here. Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's perfectly feasible, um, back alley. I mean, in terms of speaking about anarchy, then definitely. Yes, I mean, in, in terms of stream, when I set this thing up, 
I couldn't seem to get the stream working. How how is it that works? Do you need a do you need a separate piece of software for for the stream thing to work? I I I don't know. I don't understand how that works. I had to actually click on the second icon, not the stream icon, but the the webcam icon, and that's what I'm running from the, at the moment. But I, I couldn't get the top one to work. I, I, I didn't understand. It's um, it's got something to do with an external piece of software that it streams from or something. Do you need something like um? I, I, I don't know. It's like um, like Skype or something like that. Do you, do you need something like that in order for you know that stream thing to work from it or something like that? Is is that how that operates? You know, like I say, back alley. I mean, see, I would, I would be more than happy to do a, a stream with yourself. You know, an organised stream with yourself on that topic issue. You know, that that would be quite interesting. I would, I would be more than happy to. Mm, no, it's, um... mm, just what the comments missed out. I see. His profile's a skeleton with sunglasses. I'll need to look that up, as you said. Sean is a Brentube channel who makes Sargonite clear argumentation for Marxism and social philosophy. I see. I, I, I honestly don't know the, the person. I'll need to look that up. Um, debate Vosh he's a market socialist <laughs> yeah I'll add that one in I really should in fact I should do that and base the entire video on this whole oxymoron of this market socialism but really all market socialism is it's just this it's basically trying to take the the elements of capitalism and and yeah you get the point you could use a platform called streamlabs again i would need to look that one up um you know the 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 actual name of that because there's quite a few of them, you know what I mean? I was actually trying to figure out how, how this whole thing, the stream thing works, you know what I mean? I think it, it must it must operate where if you uh, if you get the the webcam up of something like that and then connect it to that. But I would need to I would need someone to show a tutorial of how to go out about doing it. You know what I mean? Because I've never done it before and I was just completely lost. I was like, what the fuck's this? You know, like all these wee things and there's like these links and all the rest of it. I was like, what the hell? It was confusing. Um, as you said, PB... Yeah, um, Vosh is another one of those capitalism cronyism types also. Looks like the soy boy stereotype. I've heard rumors he's a sexual predator. Oof. In other words, he's a, a pedo. Jeez, all. Uh, I do wonder. I would need to look up the, you know. I don't, I don't think I've came across Vosh before. Um. As you said, there are platforms which allow you to host streams by linking to your YouTube account and syncing your account on said platforms with your stream encoder. Host your streams by linking to your YouTube account. Right.
And I guess that, I guess that in, in a way you're able to link everything together so that you could even do the same on Facebook where a live feed would automatically go to Facebook and it would also go to YouTube. I'm not sure. Sh- yes. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. You know, I would, I would have to actually learn how to actually go about achieving that. It's just, um, I've never done it before, you know what I mean? It's kind of, it's new to me on this platform. As you said, I would love to debate Wash, but I'm having a hell of a time getting a hold of him. Hmm. Yeah, I don't... I'm not really the sort of person that does a lot of the the live stream debates, so to speak. You know what I mean? Um, because I love to do video. I love to do actual proper videos where it's 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 properly edited, and that's the issue that I have with live streams. Live streams like all over the place. It's, you kind of get the point. Views on the IRA, Daniel. Views on the IRA. Yeah. You know, the, the, the sad thing is in this country, in Scotland, man, it's... Scotland's a country that's strongly divided. We have a lot of the, the stuff on the religious divide and the Protestant Catholic nonsense and all of that nonsense. My my mum is a Catholic. My mum's side of the family are all Catholic, you know, and I love them all the same. Um, but unfortunately, in this country, you 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 have a great deal of hatred built up in this country in relation to politics uh, unfortunate as it is and there's conflict now because I support Rangers football club it's stereotyped that I am a monarchist that I am a British loyalist that I am Protestant that I am anti-Catholic that I support Ulster and strongly hate the Republic of Ireland, etc., etc. For me personally, and and the, the the truth of the matter is, um, I'm proud to be British. I'm not a monarchist. Um, I'm not. I'm not religious. I'm not Protestant. But I am, I was baptised Episcopalian. Now, if you don't know what Episcopalian is, it's the Anglican Church, right? I was baptised in the, in the Anglican Church. The reason being is because my, my gran, who sadly passed away um, late January this year, she was English Uh, and you know my granda who died early January the the same year I was born um, he um, he obviously met her uh, at church and and, and he I think it was through some charity thing and it was you know part of part influence to do with that and obviously they 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 found that sort of you know that anglican sort of church the the episcopalian church and so i was baptized episcopalian um an episcopalian is somewhat of a cross between protestant and catholic it, although it, it it rejects the vatican um, it, it certainly uses the, the same bishop structure as that of Catholicism. Um, 
and 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 this is the 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 whole thing that in in this country there is conflict. So when I give my opinion of that of the IRA, I have to make myself clear that my hatred of the IRA is based on a logical perspective that I am not basing it on some narrow-minded religious perspective. You understand what I'm trying to say to you. Um, so my my stance against the IRA is is to do with something that it became a terrorist organisation. Now, I, I understand there's been wrong on both sides. Now, there's no question there's been wrong on both sides, right? I, I, and and I, I obviously understand that. But my perspective, my stance isn't based on some sort of religious background, is what I'm saying. Um, as you said, Red Hood, as you say, at least Vosh isn't a full commie. He does recognise market forces are a good thing. That's why he doesn't advocate for high taxes. I see. And that's quite interesting. Uh, I, I, I would, I would have, to, have to actually look up who Vosh is, to be honest. Um, as you say, Vosh debated Stefan Molyneux. <laughs> um, yeah, not a problem at all, Kevin. I'm probably going to jump off soon enough anyway because I've got a lot of editing to do. Believe me, man. Like, um, so much bloody editing they do, it's like unreal. This, <laughs> unfortunate as it is to say, man, it's just this one's going to take a long time. I promise you, though, this, this video is going to be good, and it's not the same, it is not the same as the other part, the, the other two parts. Yes, it does cover a bit about on resources and a variety of options, and yes, it does cover a wee bit on the same example of the milk and stuff but there's there's there is difference and this one will be good um although it's it and i was thinking to myself right the video is about one hour currently at the moment and i was thinking to myself am i going to break this down into parts and separate them or shall i take the video and <laughs> shall i take the video and just lob it up all in one so i'm thinking i th I, I think what you guys, what do you think? Do you think I should just take the video and put it up all in one and, and, and it's just one concise video, even if it ends up 45 minutes to about an hour long? Um, That's the thing. Because you that, that that's the issue. It's, it's finding the... And because it's all overlaid anyway, you'll see. As you said, Vosh openly defended buying child pornography. What the fuck? That's quite... Yeah, that's, that's quite, you know, fucked up. That's... That's, that's uh, quite a... So if someone openly admits to that, wouldn't they get done for it? That's what I want to know. Views views on Stromzy? Stromzy? Stromzy. Again, I would have to look that up. I don't, I don't know if I've heard of a name before, Stormzy or whatever, but I'm, I'm not sure. What do you think about the American founding fathers, especially the Federalist ones? For me, you know, there's good and bad. You know, the American founding fathers certainly understood the the values to protecting the United States. Uh, they certainly understood the value of the, the Constitution to prevent, you know, to, to basically prevent that of big government. 
and it depends on who you're speaking about in, in that regard. But of course, I I do understand there's an argument between that of those who were uh, confederalists, those those who basically supported the confederates, um, and the issue with why people supported the strong federal government was to keep the United States together, especially when there was the threat, apparently, of war or invasion. So you had that issue over, you know, the, the, the countries. And, uh, um, you know, I'm, a, I'm an admirer of the likes of Thomas Jefferson, you know, um, George Washington for, to, to a varying degree. And of course, Andrew Jackson. But I do acknowledge the fact that they weren't perfect. They weren't. They weren't some. They they weren't exactly. You know. They weren't exactly perfect, so to speak. They had their rights and their wrongs. In other words, is what I'm trying to say. Things that you would agree with, and things that obviously, even even when it came to. Jefferson and stuff like that. Um, and Daniel, as you say, do you watch Memulus? Memulus? Ah. No, I, I, it's, this is because I haven't kept up with what's on YouTube and that, you know what I mean? And, and because of that, then I, I don't obviously know all these names, uh, you know, because um, I had obviously spent time as well on whether it was on Facebook or or Udemy and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, you you know, my, my, my view on gun, gun rights is that guns should be... Ill- Guns should be legalised here in the UK. People should have the right to bear arms. Um, that's my view on that, and uh, I think it's, I think it's far more than just a case of just owning guns. I think that you, you require. It's hard to explain. You require that of an economy, of a free market. Right, it's not just as simple as having gun rights in in this style of economy, um, and you you require a good education, a good education system. You require um, so much because see see I, from what I believe, and someone could correct me if I'm wrong. From what I believe, that if you reduce poverty and you greatly increase opportunity in the marketplace, then from my belief, that that is what would reduce the incentive for crime. Would I be right in saying that? You know, that that's what I believe. I believe if you... It, it, it's the same thing with regards to the, the, the war on drugs. The war on drugs didn't work. If you legalise drugs, you reduce the incentive for crime. Um, You know, and, and, and uh, it's the same with, you know opportunity in the marketplace if you if you make it so easy for people to set up business and do and do business you reduce the incentive for corruption and crime in that regard and and that's that's basically what i believe so you know it's not just as simple as just legalizing you know guns it it goes with saying that it's it's in relation to freeing the economy as well uh, and I don't believe people should have the right to protect themselves. Um, as you said, abortion violates the non-aggression principle. Yeah, I think you're. You've got a point. Um, you do have a point, and I, I used to sit in the fence with that. I used to sit in the fence with abortion on that issue, but. The more I thought about it, then I think, I think you know, it's it's really just it's your responsibility for your actions. And if someone falls pregnant, then the the child should be. 
uh, I, therefore I kind of took the position against abortion you know, that's just my perspective but I do understand people's argument where they say about oh well you know something when when you say about the non-aggression principle then you, you, you do have a reasonable point you've got a reasonable point because at the end of the day you're preventing a child from you know li- fr- fr- from being able to live, so to speak. Uh, but I've I've heard some other people's arguments who strongly oppose that. Again, I'm not going to get all upset because of their arguments. Right? They they can say that, well, a child isn't fully developed, therefore it's not a, a, a an actual life. It's um. I I can I can see where they're coming from, but I wouldn't agree with them. If that makes sense. You do get people who get upset about things and it's um as you said, is there an alternative to open borders and closed borders? I found the argument by what's his name? I found the argument by um, the argument by uh, Lou Rockwell was it? Was it Lou Rockwell? It was an argument to basically say that when it comes down to um, when it comes down to that of the issue on migration or, 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 you know, the open borders and stuff like that, there's a problem where it poses with property rights. You know, you can't just walk onto people's private property and say or do whatever the hell you like. You know, that just isn't the case. That isn't the the real world um, if you have private ownership. Um, and that's the problem. Because you've got private ownership of property, you require the consent. You can't just walk onto people's private property. And what, and, and that's the, hypothetically speaking, what would you then do if all private, if, if all land was privately owned, in other words? Let's just, hypothetically speaking, what would you do if the whole of Great Britain was privately owned land? Could you have open borders then? Well, there's the issue. You you couldn't. There's no possible way because the only way you could have free flow of immigration would basically be as if there is public ownership of land. Because you 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 can't just cross and and and, and do whatever you like on private ownership of land. And that private ownership of land would then be protected. Now, what I'm interested in is the anarchist's perspective. How that is protected, if not by that of a government. You know, they, that's just the, the issue. I am sympathetic to some degree to the control of immigration by government. You know, I'm not too fussed about that. And the reason being is because I can understand from the argument in economics with the laws of supply and demand, look at what happened in Hong Kong. You know, in in Hong Kong, you can see that government was to blame, really, on the immigration crisis. I can understand some people would argue, well, of course, you know, at the end of the day, that's a bit hypocritical because if you believe government is going to protect you, then isn't government going to abuse you? Well, they do have a reasonable point in that argument. I'm not denying that. But I think a specific type of government, the, the specific type of people in government, you've got because there's there's no perfect answer. Um, but you've got to take into account that just like Britain today, you can't just have the free flow of immigration when we've got a welfare state and all sorts, and it creates such a big problem. 
Um, so yeah, it's quite an interesting discussion. As you say, yeah, less poverty and better economic opportunity definitely would reduce crime. Indeed, indeed, uh, I do, and that's that's why I would I would um, support that. You know, with of course the economic freedom, and I think I think it should all come. I th you get the point. I th in other words, what I'm saying is you can't just impose the legalization of gun ownership um and 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 i would do it at a later period in time is what i'm trying to say um as you see bank is supreme what are your thoughts on the content creator turd flinging monkey uh, you know, because I was absent for a spell and I, I haven't seen any recent videos of that, I just, I found, I found, I found, I found these, these videos interesting. Videos that I had been watching and it was through my, my photography and vlogging channel. And if you, if you're not subscribed to it, you can go there and thing me, because I, I do plan to put out more content even on my vlogging and photography channel and I hope to get, um, a video done on this because that was part of you know well i use it for my my photography and stuff like that and i'm going to do a review video on it and stuff like that but um on that channel i was watching a lot of you know other videos and it just so happens to be to be that the videos i watch on that channel the the ones that pop up on your home screen, the browse screen or whatever you call it, um different videos show up to what I see on this libertarian channel. So I do tend to come across a lot of the red pill arguments. Now I'm not a whole wholehearted supporter of everything that they say because I'm not someone that views everything in such a black and white picture view. Um, you know, there's so many flaws. And, and it's it's like... <laughs> it's, it's a bit like that channel. There was one of, of a guy called Alpha Male or something like that. And uh, he, may, he makes himself out... I don't know if it's a bit like this expert, <laughs> right? A bit like this expert. And he faced a problem and he later conceded, he, he conceded that he contradicted himself the whole time. That's because the whole thing's a fallacy. For me, there is no such thing. Human beings are not simplistic. Right? We're not, we're not you know, people you can stick labels on. We're not alphas. We're not betas. We're not. We're not stupid. You know, labels. We're we're a very complex people that go through experiences, and and that's why you could go through a phase of being strongly confident, and then all of a sudden something bad happens to you, and your confidence crashes through the roof, and then all of a sudden you change, and then you're back to being confident again, and then you you know. We're a very complex species and people deal with things in different ways. But the way that the red pill community paint things is very myopic. Their view on the world is very myopic. Um, it's like as if to paint everybody exactly the same. Like everything gets put into groups and that just isn't the real world. Um, every, every being you know, every woman, every every guy is, is all different from one another. And I've always had that individualist mindset. And so that's, that's you know, when I come across a lot of the videos and, and you know, I know that Turd Flinging Monkey does a lot of, 
you know, specific videos. I did find it interesting, however, on, you know, because I know he was part of the MGTOW community, but he probably still does the videos. Uh, and I found it interesting on his, his comment on women, you know, in, in terms of why they don't take to libertarianism. I still find that topic quite interesting. And and I think part of the reason is because they, they want to replace, well, the the father figure they want to replace the the I don't know the boyfriend or husband or whoever the breadwinner with the government because the government then becomes the provider through the welfare state and I've sat and thought about that and I've th- I've sat and thought to myself you know something they actually do have some reasonable points maybe, you know, this is what the feminist movement is so caught up with. Um, I don't know. I I, I really, I don't have all the answers. But I also don't believe that things are so black and white. You know? I I really don't. Um, Just everything is so complex. But I like to, you know, analyse things from afar. Um... That's that's certainly the case, but I do, th- I do, I, you know, I, I find his channel interesting. As you said, I identify as a paleo libertarian anarcho capitalist. That's a term I haven't really heard before. Is paleo libertarian? I've heard of paleo. I've heard of paleo uh, conservatism. A paleo conservative being that of a a true right wing conservative who is against that of the neo conservatives, but I haven't heard of the the paleo libertarian uh, perspective, which I find quite interesting and and, and um, and as you said, private borders is the way to go. Well, that's that's the uh, that's the thing. I mean, I I would need to look more in, more into the information on private borders, but I think that's reasonable. I think that's a reasonable point. Private property is protected. Private property is not something that, you know, and I think I think that's a reasonable point. Um, that's my perspective. As you said, as long as there is welfare, we can't have open borders. Exactly. That's true. That is true, and that's that's the very reason why I don't see. That's the very reason. What one of the reasons why I thought it was a reasonable argument leaving the European Union. You know, and it's the same in the United States of America. They they currently, when they when they currently have, you know, people having to pay for social security, having to pay for the welfare state. You you, you can't you can't sustain this. You know, illegal immigration and stuff like that. You can't, you just can't sustain it. So it's a it's a problem in in of itself. Um, as you said, do you think government will collapse in the next fifty years? Ah, I think it's wishful thinking. Sadly, I don't know. You know, you know something. If something's going to happen in the next 50 years, it might be an economic collapse. Why? Why do I say that? Because you cannot get away with the continual fractional reserve banking. You can't get away with the continual... (laughs) With Keynesian economics. (laughs) That's it. With Keynesian economics, because let's face it, it's just going to continue continue on with the continual bailouts, bailouts after bailouts after bailouts, and it'll snowball. Because here's the problem: we're not even over the 2008 financial crisis, <laughs> and if they're going to start bailing out, you know, all of this. <laughs> 
all of this stuff now from this pandemic, what the hell is ahead? And you see these people preparing with all of the gold and silver and stuff like that. I think it's inevitable. A full-blown currency crisis will eventually come around and... <sighs> that is... <laughs> I think that's coming. <laughs> Who knows whether that's what that'll happen in the next 10 years. <laughs> I think it will come. Um... As you said, as long as there is a welfare, you can't. Uh, it's just, yeah, next with you. Yeah, libertarian socialist rant supports forced collectivization. Yeah, they all do. I mean, <laughs> libertarian socialism basically is an oxymoron. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm libertarian, but I want to strip you of your individual rights and your individual liberty. <laughs> It's like, it's like, how can you not have force? <laughs> it requires it. <laughs> you, you, you basically cannot take away individuals' rights and liberty without force and without keeping force in place, without dictatorship. Um, as you said, do you think white people and their culture will disappear because of immigrants and their lack of white people um, procreating. I don't, I, you know, it's hard to say. And I do wonder if, you know, economic arguments has anything to do with those type of things. And it's not something I really think about that much of, to be honest, you know. Um, for me, what I think about most of so long as people so long as people have the view of supporting liberty i don't care what color they are <laughs> i'm being brutally honest it's like color it's like who cares i mean <laughs> but i do understand where you're coming from and i'm not i'm not entirely sure you know I think when you free up the economy, people are able to get by easier in life financially. Therefore, they're able to sustain a family much easier and families may be bigger as a result of that. So who knows whether that may change in the next 10, 20, 30 odd, 50 years or whatever. You know, who knows? Um, but the rate of immigration is worrying and the thing that I'm worried about is not to do with the fact that it's the colour of their skin <laughs> I don't, I don't, that doesn't matter to me what I worry about is that these people that come from these countries and come to Britain they seem so sympathetic with the idea of forcing their will upon others and that was always my problem with the argument that you would hear constantly um, you know so that was always it as you say what do you think Japan will do in the future with the lack of procreation Um I've no idea. You know, I've no idea. I mean, it's a very interesting country. If I remember right, looking at their their history, they were once free market up to about nineteen ninety or something. And they they were they proved to be a very technological country. I mean, look at the camera technology, etc. That obviously. Uh, I depend upon. Um, I really don't know what effect that will have on them. Uh, it's it's quite quite fascinating. I think the problem with Japan is the fact that 
again, they're, they're very sympathetic with socialism to a varying degree, and that's what the issue is. That's the real. That's the real problem. Um, culturally, they're very different to us. Um, here in Britain, we've always had this very individualistic mentality to to some degree. Again, the same thing in the United States. That's always been my concern with, you know, immigration. See, in my eyes, you must have immigration with assimilation. Um, as you said, can you do a response to Hakim's corporatism, not capitalism? Also, as Vietnam socialist. I haven't looked at Vietnam of recent um, and it's not a country I know too much about. Uh, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a country that I've looked at too much uh, historically but you know I think it would be interesting to look into Vietnam. Um, I've certainly heard about it often enough. Um, so I couldn't answer on that, but yes, I think it would be a good, a good video to cover, um, in response to hacking. You always get that argument, though. It's always this argument that you know they try to conflate capitalism with corporatism, and it, it, two complete separate things. Um. Like I said earlier on, there's a, a lassie who I've been, you know, explaining to her on differences and stuff like that. And she was asking about, you know, capitalism and obviously about corporatism and stuff like that. So people, people are, it shows that people are wanting to learn what it is. That there are people with the open mind. And, and that's a good thing. Um... Like I said, I mean, I covered the video on that specifically. So, I'll take note of all that, all, all of that stuff. Um, and I do thank you, you guys for all of that information, and I will get around to doing that. Uh, right now, I'm prob I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably end the feed here. Um, and, of course, thank you guys for watching in. Uh, you know, these live feeds are just, they're not organised the same. You know, they're not organised the same. And and who, know, who knows whether I, I, I get to talk with people. Um, you know, do how you work out those live streams where you do talking with people and stuff like that. I, I don't know how that thing is. Obviously, I'll work that out at some point. But, you know, I think that would be an interesting thing to do. But again... Thank you guys uh, for all of your, your questions and everything and, and especially the recommendations and all of that. And this should go up on my channel anyway. And what I'll do is I'll get get to work on... Because some I don't know if some of you might have seen it, but I'll just quickly show you anyway. It's, oh, I can't see because of my fingers anyway. I'll open Premiere. You can see... Obviously, here is the the video. They obviously, I'm just using sources, and I've got you know a load of other sources I've thingied off YouTube. Um, right now the hard drive's actually thinging. This is the thing. Um, it's not a, a specific hard drive thingied for the Mac, so it takes a bit longer to thingy. To waking up, but there is something brief and all that, and I've got a lot of new overlay videos and stuff like that, and how much I had went through and edited all of the audio, like all the way, all the way along there. Jeez, old man. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh fuck. Oh, yeah, that's um. Yeah. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh, oh fucking hell, man. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh shit. How fucking long is that? Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> It's like, why is this thing going on forever and... Hold on a second. Oh my god, man. Like... <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah, I think you can, you, you kind of get the point. Um, that... That thing's going to go... Jeez, oh man. It's going to be one hell of an edit. But you know something? I'm putting hard work into this one. I don't care if this is going to take me fucking 10 hours, right? Might take me the next two days to edit. I don't know. I, I, I'm I, going to work so hard on it and spend so many hours um, editing this video. And so, um, again, thank you guys for watching you know, and, and contributing and obviously with your recommendations and of course um, after I do that video and everything I'll get around to taking note of, of all of those um, recommendations and stuff like that and whatever I can do I can I can get around to doing those um, response videos and stuff um, but this one's going to be this one is going to be epic, in other words. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, I'm going to thumb you off here. Probably go and get something to eat. And at the same time, get cracking on with that video. And, like I say, I'll put a really a hard work into it. And I should get a lot done today. A lot of it. Um... I don't care how how long it's going to be, but I will get it done. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching, and I shall talk to you later. Nighty, cheers. <laughs>